What's up, everybody? It is time for the Competition Plus Power Hour. I am Slamming Sam here after another great weekend of drag racing, NHRA drag racing, um, drag racing across the board. There's been so much going on. We're going to yak it up tonight, talk about everything um, going on. we got a great show here for you tonight. So if you're tuning in, uh, please let us know where you're tuning in from. Like, share, comment. Subscribe, depending on where you're listening, if that's Facebook, if you're on YouTube or wherever that may be. But I'm not the only one that's going to be on here, so I'm going to bring on a different face, but he's going to be the co-host tonight, and that is my main man, Darren. Darren, what's going on? How's it going, man? Great to be on the show again. I'm having difficulties. Like, if you notice this, my chair keeps sliding down. Like, I literally been fighting this chair for, like, the last 10 minutes. Like... <laughs> I'm sitting here, right, and slowly it keeps like deflating. So I don't know. I, I probably need Sam, some new shots. Don't blame it. Don't blame it on the chair, Sam. Don't blame it on the chair. Here, man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all that time I'm spending in the gym, man. That's that's <laughs> what it is. Uh, yeah. No, I this chair is just old. Like I seriously need a new office chair. Um. So yeah, like I said, if you're tuning in, please let us know where you're tuning in from. I am in the home office. The studio that is still not done yet, uh, Slam and Sam, as you can see, I got some stuff hung up here. But not, I need to like spend a weekend and actually do it. Uh, from North Dakota, my not North Dakota, why not my not? Darren, you're tuning in from where? So I'm in Studio B tonight. I'm at the girlfriend's house, but as you can see, I got this really cool Daryl Gwynn poster behind me. The great Daryl Gwynn, one of the top 50 greater, greatest drivers of all time. So got to represent Daryl Gwynn, got to do it. Studio B, as he calls it. There you Studio go. I like B. to see that. Uh, yeah, Lee is somewhere in the world doing some drag racing. Who knows yeah. what? So he cannot make it tonight. So Darren is, is I wouldn't say filling in. I wouldn't say stepping in. Darren Pinch hitting. is. Pinch hitting. Nah, man. Nah, man. You you were on the roster. You were doing it. Um, but, I mean, so, like I said, so much to talk about. Uh, drag Racing Central, what's up? What's going on? Going bracket racing. He had a great show. I caught a little bit of that. Um, so uh yeah he knows it and then my man don i got to meet don actually in indy man what a cool guy what's going on i uh, can't wait to next year you know chicago is back on the back on yes, the sir. map on the on the yes, schedule sir. so i can't wait to go down to his home track and check it out with him uh but i'm gonna ask you this i'm uh what you know what is your takeaway from this past weekend um in maple grove what if you could if you can pick one thing what would you say your takeaway would be one thing well i'm gonna I'm just go away from the racing first off i mean how about that crowd we saw during qualifying sellout crowd on saturday got to give a round of applause to everybody who came out to maple grove and also everybody who watched on tv i mean i believe it was i don't want to get this wrong 1.6 million view viewers on fox and a peak of 2.8 million i mean give a round of applause to the nhra audience because i mean they came out to play this past weekend and made it big just to go. I mean, we almost beat NASCAR for the first time in the ratings. I mean, how cool is that? Oh, definitely is, man. And, and I mean, that is that is definitely a huge takeaway from this past weekend and, you know, what was going on. I mean, to see what uh, what my homeboy, as I like to call him, Kid Chaos, Kid Chaos <laughs> out, as he always says on social media, uh, what he what he was doing with promoting that, showing, you know, the mm -hmm. like the life, the behind the scenes, of, yeah. you know, Filling the uh, French fry in the chicken strip basket, you know, mm -hmm. taking out the garbage, scrubbing the track. I mean, that's what it takes, right? Uh, yeah. it, it takes a village to put these races on and, and a family like them to do exactly what happened. And to the community of drag racing, it just proves why that, that facility needs to continue to be a part of this sport. Uh, the house of Chaos. House of Chaos. The, ho the House of Chaos, man. Uh, hey, if, if I do pick one racing thing, though, I got to go with Austin Proc. First win since Seattle 2019. That was a big win for him. I got to say, Austin Proc has one of the best celebrations. Getting on top of that wing, fist up in the air. That's really badass to see. So shout out to Austin Proc getting that man, win. That, that was cool. Yeah, I actually text Austin and I text uh, Ron Tobler after that win, man. they they That was one of those ones 
where it's like, when is it going to happen? You know, we, yeah. we focused on when Steve Torrance was going to get a win. We mm-hmm. focused on this person and that person. Um, but, you know, I think Austin Proc and Ron Tobler and the whole crew there, they got, they got overlooked. I mean, you know, they're under the camp of the JFR, you know, umbrella and everyone's looking at what Brittany's doing and what Robert's doing. But I mean, you know, what John's doing, there's still another car in that stable. And I think what, what they needed was a weekend like that. Uh, I mean, oh, was sure. I, I mean, am I happy for him? Yes. Was I surprised that Justin Ashley, you know, didn't come away with that win, but I mean, Justin Ashley and Greg, uh, and Greg and Austin and big Mike and Justin and that whole team over there, um, you know, Ryan, Mama Sharon, Dustin Davis, the most hardworking owner of a team and a crew. I mean, what they're doing, Mike Green and Tommy DeLago, uh, Mike Ashley, I mean, everybody. Ray, I'm, I'm trying not to forget anyone. Oh, and happy birthday to Cody. Uh, but that whole team, man, they're doing great things with the Philip Connect. Uh, points leaders. And, points leaders now. I mean, Even though see, and, that, and that's – Okay, but do you think that's one of those things that's overlooked, right? That team is doing so much. They're building. I mean, they're, you know, semifinal rounds, final rounds. Uh, they're putting people on the trailer that you wouldn't expect, you know? I mean, in, in, in any other year, you would say, oh, no, that's a gimme for this person. But they're putting um, people, you know, I mean, that, that crew is on the map, hands down, every weekend, you know, doing something. So, mm-hmm. I mean... Was it was it surprising? Yes, it was one hundred percent. But I mean, I'm happy for what they're doing. I don't want that to be overlooked at all on this show. Mm-hmm. Is you know that Justin Ash and them are putting in the work, and and for That's a younger true. team, for a younger team, I think they're doing an exceptional job at staying in the fight, staying in the hunt. Um, you know, and then I mean, we we look down the list. Robert Height gets another win. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, the Mustang, the big Mustang going up in fire, tw- you know, four or five different teams over there helping them out in between rounds, trying to get the car to even, you know, be there. Uh, definitely have to give a shout out. And this one, you know, it, I know it meant a lot to him, but Travis Shoemaker getting two whole shot wins going, yeah, you know, yeah. going, yeah. going on. And, and I like the, what Randy Meyer posted, you know, so much red, unfortunately we went red, but if you <laughs> listen to, especially with Travis, that, that pass that he makes going down the track and, um, you know, how excited that announcer is about talking about it. He said, you know, that's one thing that he, you know, remembered about his childhood is how excited the announcers get. And I just want to give a shout out to the, all the NHRA announcers uh, for what they do. I mean, Joe Costella, Alan Reinhardt, I forget the other guy's name, he's on the on the air, and then Brian Loans too. I mean, what they're doing, they're telling the stories of these people. They're, they're yeah. putting us into the driver's seat and the raw emotion, and that's what it's all about is just, you know, showing it and that passion shows through. Go ahead, Darren. No, I just want to say one thing real quick. So just I want to go back to Robert and Austin. We got a, one thing that can't be overlooked is the double up. John Forrest Racing double, but also the Procs doubling up. Austin Proc and Top Field and Jimmy Proc and Nitro Funny Car. I think that's cool. The father and son. That's a, that's a pretty cool deal as well. And It is. You know, any if you go back and look at it, anytime that Austin is in the finals or Austin wins, someone else from JFR wins. Okay, yeah, I, I usually Brittany and Robert double up a lot, but I mean it's it's cool to see somebody else double up with Robert this time. And I mean, just going off of Austin Proc, I mean that team was they. I'm just be honest, they fell off the face of the earth. I mean, you start off the season going to the finals of the Winter Nationals, come up just short to Justin Ashley, but then I mean after that they didn't really do pretty much anything after that. They they went to the semis in Epping, but then five consecutive first round losses. I mean, this was a good get healthy weekend for that team. I believe they're up to six now in the points. And Austin says, hey, we have a chance now to go after this championship. We're back in this championship fight. You know, he was saying the last couple of weeks of the regular season, we got that charity position. He kept saying it. We're getting that charity position. We're getting that charity position. Well, he's, make, he's making the most of it right now. So it's cool to see. But how many times have we seen someone that's on the pole not win it? You know, I mean, and, and I use the on the pole uh, reference when it comes to circle track racing. But you've seen someone that's down in points or, you know, that maybe kind of mixing it up and you can call it a charity position or whatever you want to call it. But you see what's going on. You're from you feel like you're on the outside looking in and then all of a sudden everything starts clicking. And you mentioned there that Austin Proc, they kind of fell off and 
weren't on the face of the earth. I don't think that. I think, you know, I mean, new new team, newer team put together, growing pains. I mean, yeah, did you blow up a couple parts? Did you do this? Did you do that? But you're trying. It, it wasn't like they weren't, they were going out and just saying, okay. hey, we've got to, we're going to run a four second pass and just try to make it. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, smoking the tires, uh, blowing, you know, blowing up parts. I mean, it, it's the nature of the beast. And I think, like you said, you know, it, it, it's no different than the same growing pains that Leah Pruitt went to went through yeah. up until Denver. You know, everybody was like, well, when is she going to get a win? Like, same is that team even, it, is that team going to do anything? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, with this year, and, and I said it last show, and, and I can honestly admit it, what we're seeing this year in Top Fuel is the same thing we said about last year in Funny Car. Yeah. Yeah, yeah my, and, and, I'm, and again, here it is. I'll just put, I'll just do this. Yes, this year, Top Fuel is hands down the best class. Am I a door slammer guy? Yes, I'll forever be a door slammer guy. I'm never going to shy away from it, but mark my words. Yes, what we're seeing right now with Top Fuel, hands down, is hey, the most hey. competitive, the quickest class ever. What? Lee hey, probably just hey. texted you and said something. No, you guys see that? Beginning of the year, he was saying pro stock, pro stock, pro. Now he wants to switch to Top Fuel. Now he wants to switch no! to Top Fuel. No! <laughs> I know. Oh, wait a minute. I'm just playing. Wait, I'm just wait playing. hold on. I'm just playing. Wait, I'm oh, just no, playing. no, 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 no. See, I was going to say, I was gonna say the, the pro stock talk to you later. But since you want to open up a can- Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. Everybody, take a break. Hold on. <laughs> Everybody take a sip now. Everybody take a sip. What flavor is that? I got I got the Pacific Punch. It tastes like juice, honestly. It's energy gotcha. juice, not energy drink. Energy juice. Gotcha. It's probably what they should give. Uh, it's probably what they should give John Force instead of giving him the monster when he gets on shows because he, you know. But since since you went there, <laughs> here we go. Since you went since you went there, I mean, I'm just saying. How could you not like Pro Stock this year? How could you I, not like the bat? How could you not like the battles we've seen in Pro Mod? Not said Pro Stock. I mean, Pro Mod. No, I'm just saying in both though, because I'm yeah. I'm a door I'm a door slammer guy. So you mm-hmm. want to say that? Oh, I'm switching it up. Pro Stock. Okay, Erica in Erica Enders. I mean, all year we've talked about. Oh, is she going to get her tenth win? Is she going to do this? Is she going to be in double digits? Is she? Gonna, and then all of a sudden, who goes back to back? Troy Coughlin Jr. Okay, and then all of a sudden, boom, KB. Everybody thinks KB is out of the situation. And then what does Greg do? Win number 100. Okay, double O, you know, double O Dallas. I mean, what what is he doing? Go to the final. Who? So, so you're saying that Pro Stock's not, you're not competitive? We got people leaving the sport hey, and coming hey, back. Hey, we got people hey. leaving and coming back. Oh, no, hey, no, you said hey, it. Hey, no, hey, you, hey, you hey. wanted to. You, the listeners, hey. the, the listeners know. I never said pro stock was competitive. I'm saying you're switching. I'm just, I've never said it wasn't. But we all know. But also now he's backtrack. Look, now he's backtracking. He's backtracking. <laughs> Got him. Got him. Got him, coach. The, listener, Got the him, listeners, coach. know. The listeners know what I said. But I want to give a shout out to the pro stock motorcycle too, because pro stock motorcycle has had some of the best racing so far this year as well. I mean, we all know about the rivalry between Matt Smith and Steve Johnson. You talk about Joey Glassstone putting together some great performances. You think about Mark Ingerson. I mean, the, the the type of year he's having so far. I mean. Angie Smith's running well. I mean, Pro Stock Motorcycle has stolen the show a lot so far this year as well. We got to give some love to the Pro Stock Motorcycle boys and gals. We haven't gotten there. Slow your roll. Okay. You okay, trying okay, to go? Okay. You trying okay. to go three hundred to the? You trying to go three hundred to the eighth mile right away, buddy? Hey, hey. Your hey. name? Your name ain't Grubby. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't. You are not Grubby, my boy. <laughs> so, and and to answer your question, Scott, no, I'm never changing lanes. Maybe I may have. You know, nick the center line, but I didn't hit the block. I didn't go over, you know, like earlier the controversy last year. Did I go? Did I cross the center line? No, I did not. I may have touched it, but I'm not going over. Mm-mm, not to the dark side. All right. Anyway, Lee's on here finally. So maybe, maybe we should click on. Let's see what Lee has to say. Lee, and then after life, we, living the life. In the middle of Illinois, on Hot Rod Drag Week 2020, day two out in All right, all right, all right. With without further ado, we're gonna bring on our insider. Unless there's anything else you want to talk about, because you try and say I'm switching lanes, so you know. 
Sam, it's a joke, man. It's a joke, a little, little jokey joke here on competition. Look, look, I, I, I do, I do want to say this though. Before we move on, I do want to say this. Just a quick, you know, I love stats. Just a quick little stat for the people. Um, probably doesn't even matter anyway, because I think Robert Hyde is hands down has the best funny car so far, you know, here in 2022. But um, Robert Hyde, seven wins so far this season. That's a career high for wins in a single season for Robert Hyde. But you know, when was the last time the funny car champion, the funny car champion, won the championship with more than six race wins in a season? We have to go back to 2003, Tony Petragon, almost 19 years ago. There have been drivers who won more than six races since then, but haven't won the championship. Last driver to do that, Tony Petragon with eight, 2003. There you go. There you go. And that is your random fact. Yeah, just a random by, stat. Random stat of the week. Yeah, just random. Yeah. By Darren Williams Jr. Yeah, just, just random. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to bring on Bobby. That's, that, that's your poetry moment. That's, that's your poetry moment. Of the week. <laughs> you know, pretty good. How about that? <laughs> oh no! All right. Oh no! Mm -mm. See, mm -mm. see. I don't know what happened to what happened to Bobby. Who knows? Fine, fine. That's all we can say. There's fine. Oh, bringing him back. Sorry, sorry. I don't know what happened. I think Roger, Roger cut out the internet there for a minute because all the fine stuff <laughs> in you guys. Yeah, Roger's like that guy on that movie Airplane that pulls the uh, the plug for the landing lights and says. Uh oh, <laughs> but anyway, yep. it's been a long day, fellas. I I I didn't even go. I I just walked in the house from the office. I'm I'm worn out. Uh, working since 4 a.m. So, uh, got some big things coming up at Competition Plus, Competition Plus TV. Uh, as far as the insider, I would watch for the next week or so with news coming from KB Racing. Don't you want to know? Yes. Okay. Well, I like to see. I like to talk to you guys. There you go. But anyway, uh, there are uh, there are some rumors floating around. It was hitting the uh, hitting around the pits that maybe KB Racing has been sold. Uh, of course, nobody has said anything official, and it's just a rumor. But uh, that's the talk going on. Uh, wow. But we've had these rumors before several times during the season, and we didn't put much into it, but this one might have some legs to it. So we'll just have to see how it plays out. Uh, and the latest on Factory Experimental, FX class. Okay, next topic. Uh, let's talk about <laughs> Dude. <laughs> That, that, All I'm horse, saying, that horse word is travels word, word travels fast I'm, i mean horse and buggy even though we have horse and buggy up here in north dakota you know that pigeon still does fly if you need it to fly and i'm just saying you know what they say uh, uh, fact the way that the crow flies is like trying to download that video file on dial up it's like 20 percent buffering 20%. I think that horse is like 20% pushing that uh pushing that carriage up the hill. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that's that's what's going on. And you know what, guys? Uh I'm just going to be honest with you with Legends of Series uh, when when the covid hit, it just kind of kind of blew me off track. I just be honest with you. It, it turned my life upside down. I could probably do a whole video on the whole experience, but nobody wants to hear that BS. So uh, the new season of Legends kicks off Thursday, 8 p.m. with the legend of Ed McCullough. We went back, we redid it from the one in the the first season. We remastered it, and we'll have a, a, have a, a redo of the Bob Glidden one as well coming up. Uh, we've got Pat Musi uh, up as episode two. Uh, that's going to be a good one. We got a whole lot of good ones. Even uh, Bill Bader Sr. We did one, uh, as told by his son Bill Bader Jr. But I'm real excited about Legends of Series. Uh, that was a that was a whole program that started. Uh, the NHRA had a young. Uh, PR person working there, and there's no fault of their own that they didn't know the history of the sport. But do you guys know who Richard Tharp is? Yes. 
Okay. Yes. <laughs> I see. I kind of. Uh, yes. Yes. Sam. <laughs> but anyway, no. I was reading a comment. That's why. Oh, okay. Uh, Richard Tharp walked in the Texas Motorplex Media Center, and I looked at the the young media person who must have been in their twenties, early twenties at the time, and I said, "Hey, that's Richard Tharp," and they said, "Who's that?" <laughs> but okay, but Bob. Thinking, Go ahead, Bobby. I was just thinking, how sad is that? that we haven't done a good enough job, us veteran journalists, passing on to the next generation who the legends of our sport are. And that's how Legends of Series started. But, you know, and, and I can say this to be true right now, we have a lot of people that are coming into our sport, that are working in our sport, that aren't necessarily fans like us three that are on the screen or the people that are watching. And I think that that's a good thing. And and hopefully I don't, I mean, I don't think I'll get in trouble for saying this, but even Sarah Slaughter that works for JFR, you know, she is, she came into the sport. She's not a fan. You know, most people that are embedded in this sport or into it love some type of drag racing or came from a drag racing background or, you know, or automotive background. She's not. And, and I think that that's good. We're starting to see, you know, people come into our sport that brings a different diversity. Now, I mean, you know, we, we do have to understand that. And I think that's why what, what you're doing is creating um, a, you know, that bridge. It's creating that gap that people that may not know the history of someone or anything. And I think that's what we need to do as media people is get everyone involved and tell those stories. And, and, and I think that's what, you know, our goal is, is to tell these stories of these drivers and crew chiefs and you know, people that were in our sport and what they meant to the sport, because we do right now, I think is the perfect time because we don't have a lot of people that come from a racing background that are now working or introduced to drag racing and motorsports in general. Yeah, I've been, I've been in the sport for 42 years, 42 years, and I'm just 55. And I'm talking deeply into the sport, learning everything and uh, you know, and, you know, I feel a great sense of pride and an obligation in drag racing because I got to learn from the guys like Steve Reyes, Dave Wallace, Steve Collison, all of these guys, uh, you know, that were just diehard embedded journalists at the time who came from the same gearhead background that I did. You know, a kid that that loves drag racing so much he got caught sneaking in the drag strip. And it's just, you know, it's, it's a different world than we came into the sport because we had to fight to be a part of it. I'm telling you, I mean, it, it was like a one arm man in a butt kicking or one legged man in a butt kicking contest, you know, getting, finding my place in here. And, and it was a regular beat down every race. But you learn from those guys like the Ashers, the Stevie Collison. Stevie Collison, when I sent in my first drag racing article, the Superstock and Drag Illustrated, which was the, the absolute Bible of drag racing back in those days. And I sent my first article in and he says, uh, I said, how did I do? He said, we're going to run it on the cover of the next magazine. I said, really? I said, it must have been good. He said, no, nah, I don't quit your day job to do this yet, pal. And I was like so broken hearted. And then a guy like Dave Wallace takes me under his wing and teaches me, teaches me the ropes and takes the time because he, he said he saw something in me that I would be here decades later after he's done. Well, I, I guess he had an eye for that talent, but it was a real, real fight just to gain inclusion into here. And now we're trying to find anybody we can of that young generation. I mean, if you saw the, the Justin Ashley video feature we put up about the, the similarities between him and, and Jim Epler, their career and how they work so well together, look at Mike Ashley. And he was like 19 years old, had the Mel Gibson lethal weapon look going on with the mustache and everything. You know, we all were all once young in this sport. Mm -hmm. and there was a time that he was called the kid from Long Island, and I was called just kid. Well, I was usually called asshole, but I was called kid too. But uh, 
the the thing is is that I learn from these guys and and I do everything I can to pass it on to the next generation. And I tell you what, uh, Darren survived Indy. What was that experience like being part of the starting lineup? Um, can can I get canceled on this show? Is it possible to get canceled? Get, no. get... <laughs> <laughs> nah, no, nah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Nah, Indy was, I got to be honest, Indy was a dream come true. First off, I want to say thank you again, Bobby, for allowing me to come out there and work for Competition Plus. You think about, you think about uh, working with Bobby, you think about working with Susan, um, think about uh, all the, the great photographers, Tracy, everybody who's working there, you know, being on the starting lineup, it was so cool, a dream come true. And honestly, it really made me feel like I had to raise my game, you know, being out there last year, I was out there for myself, but working with actual Competition Plus, Competition Plus, you know, sets the standard for drag racing media and drag racing online as the as a drag racing online magazine. So it really made me feel like I had to step up my game. And I'll tell you what, working with Bobby, it was get up at 6 a.m. As soon as as soon as I wake up, Bobby's on the computer. That makes you want to work. You work all day, you get back to the hotel, Bobby goes straight to the computer. That makes you want to work. So just a great work ethic, work ethic overall from this team. And I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it. Yeah, Darren, one day this will be your race car to drive, and I'll be sitting back like Don Perdome. I was, I was just Don about to say Schumacher. <laughs> when, when when the guy told you to don't quit your day job, that kind of sounded familiar coming from you to me. So I was like, that sounds pretty familiar. Well, I will tell you his last words before he died was, you know what, kid, I'm probably going to end up working for you before it's all said and done. <laughs> <laughs> there you Always go. Always remember, the toes you step on today are connected to the ass you'll have to kiss tomorrow. Yeah, that is true. That is true. True words. I'm so proud of you guys. You did a great job. I tell you, you what, you you guys, and then you add Lee in here. Y'all are a one, two, three punch, and uh, you guys give me hope for the future. So very oh, proud you. of you. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you for thank you. Thank, but I mean, before thank you, you do all, yeah, yeah, before you do all that crazy stuff, we got some stuff to talk about. There's a great question that came in. It says, "What is your opinion on the countdown be extended as long as OU qualify?" I like it if I've seen 15 cars in pro stock and none of the drama. Okay. First, we're just going to answer the first. What is your uh, opinion on the countdown being extended? Will I get canceled off the show? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you cancel it, I'll just in, in broadcast and we're done. Oh, well, I don't <laughs> get canceled. It's charity. Wait. How many times do they put NFL teams in the playoffs because they show up for all the games? You either earn it or you don't earn it. Mm -hmm. If you don't earn it, it's charity, right? Do you think it was warranted at the time? Do you think it was warranted for, uh, for the reason why they brought it out in the first place? I mean, I, I think it's no reason to have it now, but when they did bring it out, do you think it was kind of warranted at first? I want to just get your yeah. opinion on that. Mm -hmm. they, they, they manufactured excitement for the season ending. You would get like once every 12 years, you would get a season like 1980 where essentially the whole season was a, uh, a countdown to the championship where uh, because you only had eight, eight races. Mm. And at, at, at Top Fuel at the 1980, I guess you guys were like negative 20 or whatever. <laughs> but uh, Negative yeah. 10. Negative 10. 10. Okay, uh, I was Negative off by 10. that day. We actually had five top fuel cars battling it out for the top fuel championship. And the pro stock championship went down to the final run between Bob Glidden uh, and Lee Shepard was already out. So uh, it, it was natural, natural battles. But the more you got races in, the more the countdown was needed, at least to make the championship battles remain relevant. Well, so you from my area, you think of 1999, where you had like before Tony Schumacher won Dallas, you had like eight to ten drivers still alive going to down to the final races of the season. You think of 89, you think of Gary Ornsby, Joe Amato going down to Pomona. I mean, there's been so many great battles overall. You think of Gary Selzy, John Force, and Ron Caps 2005. They went to Pomona less than two rounds apart. I mean, we've had some great battles without the countdown. My question though was not necessarily the countdown in general. He, I, I was wondering what he was asking was the the extension of adding more people into the countdown when they came out with that rule do you think that was warranted during during covid and stuff like that adding you know if you qualify for every race make two qualifying runs do you automatically qualify for the countdown do you think that was really? warranted if you don't earn it in as charity i'm sorry mm -hmm. i mean I, that may not endear me with some but mm -hmm. if you don't make it in 
I mean, my, look at how many times my beloved Tampa Bay Buccaneers were one game out. They showed up for every game. Mm-hmm. I mean, did they get in the playoffs? No, they didn't. Gotcha. You have to earn your way in and a top mm-hmm. 10 finish. And I'm sorry, that's just the nature of the game. If you make it in, you make it in. If you don't, you don't. Mm-hmm. Well, Bobby. It's my opinion. It doesn't mean I'm right. As Pat says, everybody gets a trophy. <laughs> Not in my world. So, Bobby, you're saying that there's winners and there's losers, and that if you don't win, then you're a loser, and that you shouldn't get in. No, if you don't make it in the top 10, top 10 is a standard. If you're going to say the top 12, then make it the top 12 teams. But don't give somebody that's outside of that just because they came to all the races in. Extend the countdown and say we're going to expand it. They always expand the playoffs, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, remember when I was young, it was like, Four, four play. You know, they they started with the wild card, and now we have what, what three wild card games or whatever now. Just just expand it, but don't give give it because someone went to all the races. Mm-hmm. It's that's what it looks like. So you mm-hmm. just say we're going to expand it to 14, 16. What what is the saying? Perception is reality. And if they, you know, expand it, that's the reality, you know. Mm. I think I think ten is is just right. I don't think you should expand it at all because then you, I think you take away that good battle to try to get into the countdown going into Indy and stuff like that. I think ten is the good cap right there. Just leave it at that. Uh, but I do believe that that rule of qualify for every race, run at least two qualifying sessions. I think that needs to go go away after this season. I think you know I think it's not needed anymore. Just in my opinion. Well, you know what they say, like opinions. What they say? Yeah, mine are always one. right. <laughs> That's what they say. Everybody has an opinion, but Bobby's is always right. <laughs> hey, what, whichever way, whichever way you want to think of it, Bobby. But Bobby, I want I want to ask you this. Uh, seeing what the the um, House of Chaos did this weekend, full stand, uh, you know, the huge American flag held up. Uh, I mean. Uh, Kid Chaos running around, you know, posting videos of him deep frying, making sure the fries are going to be right, making sure the freezers are stocked. What did you think about that? Let me ask you, deep down, are you really surprised? (laughs) Are you really surprised that it went You can't answer a question with the question. Uh, Well, I'm just saying. (laughs) It's just obvious. Is the sky blue? I mean, no, no, it ain't right now. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I mean, it's but I'm pink just saying, in the morning. look at the work ethic of the uh, of Kenny Koretsky that he's passed down to his son, uh, Kenny Jr. and Kyle. Think of the work ethic. Did you honestly believe that it was going to be anything less than maximum overdrive with some nitrous on the top? I, I I'm I'm surprised. I'm surprised that they didn't shut down the whole town of Philadelphia with people trying to get in the place. They were the perfect people for that track. Mm -hmm. Kenny Koretsky, let me tell you something. He's an MSH guy. You know what an MSH guy is? You can substitute the middle word, whatever you want to, but an MSH guy is a make stuff happen kind of guy. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he makes stuff happen. And let me tell you something. There is no doubt you speak to, to Kyle Koretsky, there ain't no doubt who his daddy is. You know, I mean, you just you just have to know him. I mean, look at how the guy got his nickname. Warren Johnson looked at him and says, God, he's Captain Chaos. He's all over the place, you know, and, and that's just the way. We're talking about a guy who qualified in top fuel and pro stock in the same weekend, right? Phoenix 1990. Yep. Now you can't even do it. Nope, you can't, but that's not his choice. Mm-hmm. Not his choice, because I guarantee you they would do it if they could. But Do you think we should be allowed to? I don't see why not. Do you? I mean, NASCAR lets them run a, a Bush series. Um, I don't even know whatever freaking series it is. I don't care. Since Tony Stewart stopped racing NASCAR, I don't even look at it. So, uh, All right. But I like what – races- <laughs> And, I, and don't even get me to comment on this, but you have your tech, a second tier series 
in your top tier series. And you know what I'm talking about without me even saying a word. Uh, but, you know, you've, you've seen them race on Friday. You watched them race on Saturday. You watched them race on Sunday. I don't see why it's a problem, but evidently it is. I don't. I don't think tears is a word we should be talking about right no, now. No, no, because yeah, it's, yeah I think it's not yeah, good. yeah. <laughs> let's, let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. I shouldn't have brought that up. Just move on. <laughs> wow. Well, DRC brought up in the comments, so I was like, you know, let's not. Yeah, let's not talk yeah, about tears. Well, I mean, you know what? You you can talk about the girl and her breast stinking. But you ain't gonna talk about her breast thinking to her. You're just gonna just sometimes you just keep your mouth shut and it's better off that way. Yes, sir. And, and, and right. let me see something that announcer. I think he's at the top of my books anyway. He may have misspoke on that, but that guy's a great, great guy. He's a great mm -hmm. person, great individual, and good for the sport. Just didn't use the right words. All right. And with that said, we will take a Ride down the recap brought to you by Competition Plus. Darren does a great job at putting these together. So we'll take a Reading recap right now. The countdown to Thank the championship you guys for kicked off this past weekend in Reading, Pennsylvania. And the sellout crowd that showed up to Maple Grove surely did not leave disappointed. After five consecutive first round losses, the driver of the Montana brand top field dragster, Austin Proc, rallied his team at Maple Grove as Proc went on to capture his first win of the season and second of his career, outlasting Justin Ashley in the final round, who took over the points lead by weekend's end. In pro stock, it was all elite all the time once again, as points leader Erica Enders extended her lead in the pro stock championship point chase as she defeated teammate Troy Coughlin Jr. in the final round to score a seventh win of the season and 40th of her career. And in Pro Stock Motorcycle, for the third time in the last four races, Joey Gladstone found his way back to the winner's circle, defeating Angie Smith in the Pro Stock Motorcycle Final and taking back the points lead with his four races left to go in their season. And finally, in Nitro Funny Car, Robert Height's career year continued as he outlasted a red lighting Tim Wilkerson in the Funny Car Final to not only extend his points lead, but also pull off the John Force Racing Double at Maple Grove, scoring his seventh win of the season and 60th of his career. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a special fast-paced recap of the 2022 Pet Boys NHRA Nationals from Maple Grove Raceway in Reading, Pennsylvania, brought to you by Competition Plus. There you go. Again, like always, great job, Darren, on putting those recaps together for us and Thank just you. taking us down a little bit of memory lane from this past weekend. Um, and as our show tonight, I mean, we will be talking to Pro Stock Motorcycle, so we'll kind of skip that class um, until we have our guests on tonight. But, I mean, as we talked about, I mean, this year, you know, everybody is saying that the place is crazy. Um, the Koretsky family will be talking to them tonight, too, about what they've been doing. <clears throat> but... I mean, this whole this whole talk about the countdown and points and battles and this and that. I mean, there's just so much to talk about there and when it comes to it. I mean, what the elite team, the whole team over at Elite, you know, that whole stable is doing, what they're putting together with their cars. It's KB out. Now there's news about KB, you know, potentially merging. Did they get yeah. bought out? What's this? What's that? I mean, do we look at a season that, you know, coming into these last five races that we all have questions of what's going on or what's going to happen next. I mean, what what are we looking at at this point? I mean, can we hands down say that this has, well, just aside from the first race of the countdown, this regular season, this was one of the most exciting regular seasons we've seen in a long time. Can we say that just right off top, like off rip? Can we say that? In yes, opinion, I, I mean, I mean, I, I think when we look at it, I mean, the drama that's based off of this season has promoted it even more ending last year with the, you know, the silly season, who is going to be a team owner, who's going to be this, you know, Tony Stewart coming into the sport, Matt Hagen. And then you start the season, Matt Hagen and Robert Hyatt have this battle that's going on. You know, you got KB, the, the ongoing saga of KB and uh, elite, and then you throw in the pro mod, D wagon, shoot out everything that's kind of happened there. Now we're having the the battle of Royale between who's going to be at the top of the who's going to be at the top of the list when it comes to um, you know top fuel, 
I mean, then you got Matt, you know, you got uh, Matt Smith and Angie Smith racing versus Steve Johnson and, and Steve Johnson versus the women in motorcycle. And now where is Steve? Now where is Steve Johnson? Because, you know, who knows what's going on? Is he still eating broccoli or is he, you know, putting bedazzled jewels on his riding jacket? I mean, you got all this stuff going on, but at the same time, you've got phenomenal racing. So we're all kind of wondering, like, uh, what did you guys take at the end of last year and when is this going to wear off? I don't want to go away from NHRA just yet. I'm, I want to go back to. I just want to ask you something real quick because I know you're a door slammer guy. Have you have you seen Steve uh, Stevie Fast on on uh, on social media today? And the the the, the thing he's working up with the the no prep guys. Did you see that? I thought that was pretty entertaining. This okay. I don't know if we're gonna get. We might get canceled for this, but I'm I'm him the ones and twos, and I don't know if you are. See, as soon as you start talking about this, my feet my feet start playing again because I I got amped up, but. This is That's a thing. And let, let's, no, let, let's honestly talk about this. And, and it goes hand in hand with promoting yourself as a driver, as an influencer in this sport. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is what it comes down to. People got mad. People get mad at Alex Laughlin because he calls out Ryan Martin. People get mad because Lyle Barnett and Stevie Fast and, and Thorson and all these guys are on social media talking crap. Mm -hmm. That's where, like, before social media, they were all on like AIM or AOL talking crap. Like, you know what I mean? And if you're not talking crap online, you're talking crap at the racetrack. Yes. Like, the feuds, the battles is what's drawn more people to our sport. Um, MMA didn't get famous and UFC didn't get famous because people weren't talking crap. No. Mm -hmm. Why are you... Why do you think Floyd Mayweather and and I'm going from each sport? Why do you think Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor made millions mm -hmm. off of off of one fight? Look at all these influencers off of Facebook and Instagram that are famous and YouTube that are famous now in their boxing because they talk crap. Yes, talking crap promotes yourself. And in in the in the world of uh, no prep kings and all that, that's why that show is so famous. It's because there is excitement. It's a locker room chat. It's a chat in the garage that you get to see. And everyone's like, oh, I don't like this person. I'm going to call him out. Maybe I might punch him in the face. Maybe I may do that. <laughs> I'm not condoning that in NHRA. I'm just saying a little controversy goes a long way. I agree. I agree. And I, and I like Stevie Fast calling him out saying, hey, we got the baddest door slammers in the world over here in NHRA. I like how he says that, you know, calling him out. Yeah, and with Stevie, look, I'm, I'm, as you see, I'm wearing a KTR hat. Stevie Fast Jackson didn't he's a grudge racer i mean let's mm -hmm. be honest how did the guy get famous how did he get the name stevie fast jackson he got it from a promoter stevie fast jackson was not his original name it was it was uh steve jackson like on jackson. like he was just a he was a racer right mm -hmm. and then he went to all of donald long's races and then they started calling him stevie fast because the man was quick and then stevie went flying and Stevie had to get a new car. And when Stevie got a new car, he was even faster. And then he got met up with, um, I don't know if he's a king or Abolushi. I'm just, yeah. He met up with them and they were like, hey, drive our car. He drove their car and started tuning their car. And now look, ah, surprise. Mm -hmm. Multi time yes. military champion, multi time US national champion. I mean, dude's living a life. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Scott Malpass, I'm saying it. People are since, yes. Everybody needs to stop. Take a deep breath. Stop being so sensitive. It's okay. Hey, you talk crap. You kind of put yourself on a spot here. What, what was it? What was your aim screen name back in the day? Just curious. Just curious. Me? Yeah. If you had Sam a name, Sam, aim? my aim screen, um, Sam Blaster eighteen. Okay. 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 What like about it. yourself? I can't say it on air. I was in. I was in middle school. I can't say it on air. <laughs> you need you need to send that to me in a private message I can't, right can't now. Say it on I, I can't say it on you need to send that in a private message right I just, now. Yeah, I just put myself on the spot. <laughs> exactly, you're inappropriate. Uh, <laughs> no, but see, this is the thing. Sam Blaster 18. Sam is my name. I ran for MLK Blasters as a track team. And you okay? What was that? Oh no, I just heard a weird noise outside of my house. Um. And 18, eight's my favorite number, and eight was already taken, so I put a one in front of it. 
Okay, well, I, I had two. So we're, we're going to get back to Drag Race real quick. I just want to say, so I had two screen names. The other one was, uh, so it was Dat, D-A-T, Kid, K-I-I-D, DJ, because DJ is my nickname, Darren Jr., 21, because when I play basketball, my number is 21. So I was in middle school, all right? That kid, DJ, 21. There you go. I mean, hey, I mean, we've, we've all had nicknames. My other nickname was Jump King Smitty. I ran track. I, I did long jump and triple jump. Jump King Smitty. That was me. Nice. Hey. Nice. nice. But, I mean, I'm no kid. Chaos. Get chaos out. I love that. I love it. I do too. And when I watch one of his videos, when I watch his videos, I do that. But Darren, most importantly, we have to thank some people that, you know, make this show possible for us right now. And we are going to take a second and thank one of our main sponsors. <laughs> Hey, Sam, before we move on, uh, can I give, give a little shout out real quick? Um, I want to talk a little NHRA Heritage Series since we got a little time to fill. Uh, so this past weekend, the NHRA Hot Rod Heritage Series was in Tulsa, Oklahoma for their penultimate race, the Nitro Nationals at a Tulsa Raceway Park. And what a great event it was. Only two funny cars showed up, Jeff Gregory and Chris Crable driving for Mike Bartone and Tony Leber. But uh, Chris Crable, Hollywood, Chris Crable got the win in Nitro Funny Car. Funny car so just want to give a shout out to him. And in top field, they had one of the biggest top field fields in over a decade. I believe 11 showed up. 14 were entered, but only 11 showed up. Still a great field for that for that class. And it, what a great top field final. Yeah, Sean Bowen taking on the champion speed shops, Adam Sorokin. Sean Bowen got the win. Adam Sorokin deep staged on Sean in the final round, but unfortunately hit a bump at the top end. The pan pressure went up and shut the car off, allowed Sean Bowen to drive away for the win. So great series right there, the NHRA Hot Rod Heritage Series, penultimate race of their season. Uh, the final race of the season will be in Bakersfield, California, October 21st to the 23rd, final race of that of their season. It'll be a lot of fun. The championship battle in top field is, is super close. So Brett Williamson, um, the Forever Young car is 32 points in the lead uh, in front of Tyler Hilton going into that final race. And big news for, from Tyler Hilton coming this week. So stay tuned. That press release is going to drop at the end of the week here on competitionplus.com. So stay tuned. Some big news coming from Tyler Hilton. And that's really all I got to say. I don't know where Sam went. Oh, yeah, Sam is gone. So I'll just, oh, shoot. Anyway, but what a great weekend we had this past weekend out at Maple Grove. I mean, you talk about it. Justin Ashley now in the points lead, taking the points lead away from Brittany Forrest. And I'll tell you what, Antron has Brittany's number right now. You talk about that final round from the U.S. Nationals, and it comes back and obviously a little mechanical failure for Brittany in that second round. But Antron kind of has Brittany's number uh, so far this season. I don't want to say it's that. And we talked about it last week on the show or a couple of weeks ago when you can see how people are staging. Um, I looked at that here this past weekend. And I mean, yes, they may have that number, but also I think it's a staging thing, um, you know, and I mean, right now, like you said, it's the playoffs. You can't hold anything back. Everybody's, you know, in their groove, in their element. And you see teams peaking at the right time. I mean, could you have said, you know, before Denver or whenever it was that Antron Brown was out of it? I mean, yeah, was he on the outside of the fence looking in? I mean, it kind of goes back to that old saying, I like to say that Sandlot feeling, right? I mean, you've always sat back there in the sand lot. Everyone knows that scene where Squinch says, you know, today is the day. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, when he's sitting there looking at the lifeguard or whatever it may be, we're, we've always been on the outside looking in. And a, you're only a couple of runs away from taking it away from someone or, you know, putting it in there. And when you have world-class drivers like they are, I mean, you know, you heard uh, in, in Indy, you heard Antron say, there's no one in this class that, I really want to compete against. And then when you have a guy like Justin Ashley in the other lane, you have Brittany in the other lane, Steve Torrance, um, Austin Proc. I mean, you know, like I said, Austin Proc, yeah, you can say he got the charity position, but he's a damn good driver. Oh, I mean, for how sense. young he is, yeah. I mean, look yeah. at it. I mean, the youngest people in this in the class right now uh, for them is, is Justin Ashley, um, Alex Laughlin, and Austin Proc. Uh, Krista Baldwin. I mean, you know, those are those are going to be your four youngest in that class. And then when you look at, you know, uh, Funny Car, I mean, it's it's really, really old. Uh, you know, I mean, that's super. I wouldn't say super young, but that's in the younger. Uh, him and Jr. I think J 
KRs around our, you know, our age, 37 years old. So, I mean. Hey, I'm in my 20s, bro. Calm down. I'm in my 20s. Calm bro, down. you're like 28. <laughs> 27. <laughs> oh, you're over the hump. <laughs> see, sit, see, hey, right here. Stop being so sensitive. Bro, you're, al- <laughs> you're almost, you're closer to 30 than you are 20. I'm I get censored saying. by my age. I get censored by my exactly. age. I'm, I'm 27. You wait. You wait. You wake up and your phones crack. Okay, it's okay. Hey, um, so Joey Glassman just came in studio. I just want to say this real quick. Um, I, in my opinion, I think yes, Justin Ashley has the points lead, and it's going to be a battle. It's going to be Ashley, Salinas, Torrance, Brittany, Antron going right down to the wire. But I just feel like with the racetracks we have coming up: St. Louis, Las Vegas, Dallas, Pomona. These where we get the cool air temperatures, the flat surfaces, like a Vegas, like a St. Louis. I feel like this plays into Brittany and David Grubnick, Max Savage's hands. I want to see if they can capitalize on this and take advantage. I, I think this is you know what, this is up. you know where you're gonna see you're gonna see that 300 mile an hour. You're gonna see it in Texas, even so? though it may be a little bit higher. You got so many qualifying passes. You know what I mean? I mean, you got a chance as soon as you get into the field. I think Grubby's gonna be doing it a little different. They don't have the Pep Boy call out this time, so I think you know he's gonna set that run and go for it. And then once he knows he's in the field lights out hey remember so we've seen a lot of 338s 337s this year but remember stampede of speed friday night qualifying last year 363 335 they laid that was that was a great run for last season so uh, grubby threw down last year we'll see what he can do this year and that's what dallas i'm saying as a super track there's a lot of records being that have been laid down at, at dallas so we'll see yeah i mean like i said as soon as as soon as grubby gets down there friday night he's gonna have the weather the atmosphere i think it, you know it'll be a little bit cooler for him especially a Friday night rolling in there and he's gonna, he's gonna, I was on, I can't even say that on this show anymore. I mean, I was going to say, yeah, I'm not even going to even say it out loud because I know there's going to be negative comments about that. Uh, he's going to roll into the staging lanes there. That gives you a hint. And when the staging lane lights come on, uh, I think we're all going to be in for a surprise. Um, yeah, I'm not even, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyway, with that being said, I think, I think, yeah, I think Texas is going to be another great race to see things. And I don't think it's just going to be one person that does that. I mean, mm-hmm. like Mike Ashley said, do you want to be second to do that? No. Do you, it, it all is based on who wants to be the number one person to do that. And I think, I think that's our chance to do it. Uh, but when we talk about younger people in the sport, man, uh, this next person that we're going to bring on is young. He, he's kind of doing it his way, his style. Uh, you know, and and that's what it's all about is just doing it in which way you want to do it. So right after this break, we'll bring on our Pro Stock Motorcycle champion from last week. Classic car owners, make your headlights over twice as bright with Holly Retrobright LED headlights. A plug-in replacement for those dim halogen seal beams, Retrobright maintains that classic look and lasts six times longer. Stay safe and click the link below to learn more. And just like that, Joey is on with us. Man, first time on the show, so welcome to the Competition Plus Power Hour. How's it going tonight? Good, man. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, okay, perfect. We can hear you loud and clear. Awesome. I'm, I was a little nervous about that because I, I live kind of like deep in the woods. So I was kind of, some nights it's good, some nights it's bad. So I'm glad it's working out. When you say deep in the woods, I got to ask, where, where, what's deep in the woods to you? So I'm about I'm about 20 miles like northwest of Richmond, but it gets real it gets like real country real quick. Like it's um all the houses are are cut into like wooded lots and stuff, and we got a couple acres out here. And it's just a lot of trees, so there's really no service. See, that's where I need to be. No, no, it's not. I <laughs> thought it would be fun. <laughs> Trust me, dude. I'm moving. I'm moving to a condo or a townhouse or something. Like we um we we're away too much to maintain uh, a wooded property. That's that's for sure. It's I it sounded like it sounded really good on paper and and that we could do it, but but with this crazy lifestyle that we live, it's just we really we need an apartment or a condo or something. But, are you are you originally like a city boy, or did you kind of just like you know always grow up and kind of like you know in the country and stuff like that? No, so I, I actually I grew up uh, about thirty minutes outside of Reading, Pennsylvania, in Westchester, okay. Pennsylvania. So that's why that was, uh, you, know, you might've heard that might be like my home track, but uh, yeah. and it was just, you know, just a regular uh, 
uh, Philadelphia suburban neighborhood. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, But uh, then we moved to Delaware, which was kind of like farmland. So it was all fields and um, spent a lot of time riding dirt bikes out there and stuff. And it was a cool place to grow up. And then then um, when I was old enough to move out on my own, we we me and a bunch of friends moved down to the beach in Delaware and spent a lot of time at the beach. That's, um, you know, I, where a lot of a lot of my like really lasting friends that I have now were those relationships were were made down there in coastal Delaware. And we still love it. Like Nicole and I miss it very much. And um, it's probably where we'll end up retiring. But then uh, then I, um, you know, with the whole racing deal, I've moved around a little bit. And now we've ended up in in uh, ri- near Richmond, Virginia, because um, my tuner, Cecil Towner of HTP Performance, he's always been around the Richmond area and the shop, like his shop is part of um, like, it's connected to another shop and uh, that shop came up for rent. So we were just like, let's just, you know, put our race stuff there. We'll be close to Cecil and we'll get some CNC machines and, and, you know, make some parts and, and it's so far it's been pretty good. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, living out there in the woods, I got to ask, since I live in Minot, North Dakota, and yes, you can probably look at me and say, why do you live up here? But <laughs> I mean, do you, do you do any hunting? I mean, is there, is there any of that right near where you are? Or do you enjoy any of that stuff? I, uh, we, me and Corey and Corey's dad, Jim Whiteley, we, we love fishing. Um, I, I've never, I've always thought it'd be cool to hunt, but I've never actually like put the effort into, uh, you know, go through the whole hunter safety stuff. And if you're going to do if I was going to do it, I was going to do it the right way. So that takes time and dedication. And I got a lot of friends that are avid hunters and and, and it looks like a lot of fun, but um, it's, it's something that you got to kind of put a lot of your time into. And I just, uh, we don't have that much time, but I've, I've always fished, you know, my whole life. So that's, um, you know, I've already, already got the gear to know how to do it. So we, we do a lot of fishing and and we enjoy it. It's a good, it's a good time. You don't have to be as quiet as you do when you're hunting. So it's kind of, it's kind of a fun activity. Yeah. <laughs> but no, a lot, a lot of fishing, no, no hunting for me. Like I said, I know people just, just fishing and cold beer. Nice. Nice. It, yeah. we, we mentioned cold beer and, and this might be kind of just an obvious question. We're talking cold beer. Are we talking Miller time? Oh yeah. Yeah. So if it comes <laughs> to beer, it's Miller time at this time. And you guys are, what did you say you're in uh, Wyoming? North Dakota. North Dakota. So it's like, what time is it out there? It's like seven or eight o'clock. It's nine o'clock on the dot right now. Gotcha. Gotcha. Wow. You're only an hour different than I am. That's, that's yep. crazy. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, but at this time of night, it's, it's probably something like this, like a white Russian or something, but no, uh, no, no, no Miller light tonight. Was there yeah, Miller light after yeah. the wait on? Oh, I'm sorry. You go, Sam. Go ahead. I know what you're asking. I was just, I was just going to ask, was there, I'm sure there's Miller light, you know, a lot of Miller light being drinking Sunday night though. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. I had a Miller light actually. Um, it was, I had a Miller light delivered to me by the time that we were getting in the pickup truck to head back to the starting line. That was, <laughs> was one of the perks of having Miller light on your helmet. People know you like it. So they, they bring it to you. Awesome. But, awesome. And that's just one thing. Like, I mean, we've talked about it many a times. This is kind of the late night show of, uh, of drag racing so cheers to everyone that's out there hey. darren i don't know what you have i don't have um, anything I, I, got, I don't drink so i got this is monster and this is water in a dicky cup because if you can't be country is, unless you drink water this is milk okay gotcha okay. gotcha gotcha no gotcha. mm. oh, see we call those gainer shakes up here in north dakota you know really yeah that's what they're called gainer a lot of cars shakes. got a gainer like gaining oh, weight gainer, gainer shakes, shakes. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, all these right. V twin guys keep getting way put on me, so I can I, now I don't have to watch what I eat or drink anymore. <laughs> you know, or there's a bunch of little babies out there. So hey, I've been enjoying it. I don't got to diet no more. It's great. So oh, so speaking of that, I mean, it seems like every couple of weeks, you guys, I mean, somebody's getting weight put on them. Someone's saying this. We've we've had Matt on the show. We've had you know Matt and Angie. We've had uh steve on the show i mean what is from your perspective the motorcycle class is this big ball of controversy right now i mean right before you came on i was talking about it is steve talking about one of the ladies having bedazzled uh fire suit or or you know eating too much broccoli or this guy's crying about this and this guy's taking too much time on the starting line 
from your perspective. I mean, now we're, we're getting another perspective. What, what is the whole drama situation like, or what, I mean, what is it really, what's really going on inside the pit? Um, well, in, I mean, the V twin guys and the, and the Suzuki guys or girls say we, we poke fun at each other and it's all in good fun. At least for me, it is, it's in good fun. Like, you know, five, five pounds here and there. Um, you know, it, to some people, it means more than others. Um, I don't know. I, I think that there's other, other ways maybe that, that it might be, uh, a little better for as far as parody goes. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I, um, as far as like, I don't think that, that any, I don't think that Suzuki should be 630 pounds. That's the heaviest they've ever been. Um, and I think that some of the data shows that, that um, there's some V twins out there that make a, a lot more power. And I, I see it on the racetrack myself. If I'm behind at the thousand foot or if, I, if they're next to me at the thousand foot, I don't got a chance. You know, I got to lead the whole race all the way up to the finish. Um, but there's, you know, I think that there's ways to make V twins 60 foot better than what people are claiming. Um, it's, but that's, that's just my opinion. That's not fact, you know, uh, is, you know, I, I, I used to average 105, 106, 60 foots with my V twin, um, at 640 pounds. And my average right now is probably up, uh, you know, a mid one Oh five on my Suzuki. So, um, to say it can't be done and that, and that Buells can't, can't 60 and three thirty with, with the, uh, Suzuki's, I, I don't think there's any truth to that. As far as um, power to weight ratio, we um, we both make consistently the, pretty much the same horsepower, but V twins make a, a pile more torque. So um, it's just about managing that torque through your clutch tune up and your chassis. And I, I think that the V twins in the right circumstances can are, are going to like it, it's going to get to a point where once they figure out how to do it. I think you're going to see some more rule changes, which is kind of crazy because the rules never used to change this much. And now it seems like, I don't, I don't know how many weight changes we've had this year, but I think it's something like three. And um, I just kind of, I hope it gets to a point where it settles down and, you know, it needs really, what needs to happen is there needs to be, you know, in the late rounds, there needs to be two Suzuki's and two V twins every time so that we can, you know, put this whole parody thing to bed. And so you mentioned, you know, rule changes, how many there's been so far this season. From your perspective, do you think that as far as the rule changes, do you think you shouldn't penalize, do you think they shouldn't penalize a, a, a certain brand for going out and dominating winning races? Do you think rule changes should happen at the end of the season where, to make it more fair? I just want to get your opinion on that. No, I, I don't think it should necessarily happen at the end of the season because it could make, um, if a, a single person dominance or single brand dominance all year, um, nobody, nobody really wants to watch that. And at the end of the day, it's all about watching good racing and having, you know, nail biter finishes and, 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 you know, a, a really awesome countdown that everybody's competitive in. Um, I think that, that mid season rule changes should be allowed to happen, but they need to be warranted by, uh, by a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of data, not just by, um, one or two races. Um, it, that goes back to even like, um, Denver, um, Matt dominated by, I mean, he had, seven, eight numbers on the field. Um, he's got a killer tune up. He's, uh, should he have gone that quick? In my opinion, if I was him, I probably wouldn't have tried to go that quick. Uh, he probably could have saved himself a couple pounds for the next couple races, but Matt, Matt, Matt don't lift, you know, Matt's, Matt's balls to the wall. He's going to show, show what he's got. And, um, I don't think that he thought that there was going to be a rule change after Denver cause it's considered an anomaly race, but I guess the NHRA had different opinions and, um, and they're, they're the ones that, made that decision to change the rule. Um, I certainly didn't push for it. Like I said, I don't really have any direct contacts with, um, with NHRA. Um, you know, there's other people in the class that are closer to NHRA than I am. So I, I kind of just let the, let the powers that be be, and it, and it will be what it will be. And I just kind of deal with my circumstances the best that I can. Cause I certainly don't have, um, I used to have a competitive V twin, but all that stuff's gone now. So it's, it's not even my option to like to like switch back and forth. So I just got to concentrate on what my rule set is and um, try and be the best Suzuki that I can be. Because, you know, even you see it in classes like Pro Mod and uh, and stuff like that when there's multiple power adders, even like Top Alcohol Dragster. Um, the, 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 the classes that have the most parity are, are you know, Top Fuel, Funny Car, Pro Stock Car, and, uh, you know, uh, Top Alcohol, Funny Car, and uh, what else? Um, 
what other single power and whatever there wherever there's only one type of car that's the only time you're gonna have true parity and nobody can complain um even in like top alcohol dragster there's there's always been the debate about the blown cars versus the the injected cars and it's just it's never gonna go away everybody's gonna always talk about it um and it's it's you know i wouldn't want to have the job of deciding how to make that fair when there's multiple avenues to go down that's a really challenging deal so with uh if if i'm not willing to be the guy that would bear that responsibility i can't really pass judgment on the ones that do you know so what do you think about that i mean you kind of lightly talked about that but you know is it is it challenging for you knowing that you know matt smith may come out in one bike or another or do you just put your tune up in it race your race and it doesn't matter you know what bike the person in uh, next to you is running or you know who you're running do you do anything different per se for e any racer or you know what kind of bike that they're running no not not particularly um if it, look so i've I, we had the conversation as a class that um about the spare the the extra bike thing the you know even if it's a different brand or whatever and um when everybody was together and talking i it, it was kind of a there was some consensus that um, it, it's not particularly an advantage to pull out a motorcycle in the, a different motorcycle in the middle of a race, not having any data for that weekend. It's a very challenging thing to do. So if you're good enough to do that, like if you one, if you're if you're you know ballsy enough to do it and, and you and you're good enough to do it and pull it off successfully and go rounds with it. I mean, that just kind of shows how good of a of a racer and rider that he is. So um you know, if if he wanted to change motorcycles right before he raced me, I don't think I'd see it as an advantage for him. Um, you know, it's in the rules. It is what it is. I'm just going to go up there and uh, hold on. My low power came on, but I'm still good. But um, but no, I I don't I don't really I don't really see an issue with it honestly. Um, I I've only beaten Matt. I think I've only beaten Matt two times in my career, and. Um, and I've, I've raced and I've beaten him once on a Suzuki and once on his Buell. So um, I've, I've proved to myself that, that I can do it under the right circumstances. Um, uh, he's, he's, he's a five-time champ. He's, he's the best in the world. And um, to, to do it once is awesome. To do it twice is great. But I have to keep this up if, if I want to continue to compete with, with people like him. And, and um, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not scared of it, man. If it doesn't, if it doesn't go my way the next time I race him, I'll just work harder and hopefully get him the next time. And so you mentioned Matt Smith, and like you said, you raced him this past weekend. He qualified number one. You qualified eighth. I just want to ask, how psyched up were you for that round? Because with the win, you take the points lead, but just knowing you guys only have five races in this countdown, so not the six like the other classes. So knowing you have one less race, how psyched up did you get for that round win? And just knowing that, hey, this is a, the only way to gain points on Matt is to beat him right here. So how psyched up were you for that round? Um, before the round or after? Just before, like just immensely and after. Before, man, I, honestly, I, I try not to work myself up into a tissy because that's how you make mistakes. Um, I, I knew, I kind of, I, I knew that I had a bike that, that was close enough to where if he faltered just a little bit, that I would, uh, that I would have a shot at it and whatever happens, happens like, um, that's kind of like that's kind of my my way of thinking i'm gonna go up there i'm gonna do my best i'm gonna try and go 30 or better on the tree and if if they're right there with if they give me a shot i'll take it if they if if they go 30 or better and they drag me down the racetrack then then that's then they they won they they earned it and it wasn't meant to be i've I've stopped trying to 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 care too much about the results because is because I the, the only thing you can do is is to do your best when in that scenario and if if your best didn't cut it right there, that's it, fine. I mean it, it doesn't mean you're done. You just you know work harder, progress, and 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 try and get them try and get them the next time. So you can't get you can't get um, in my opinion you you can't get caught up in in overthinking before a run. Um, like because like I said, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. When you do most of the time, when you overthink it and you spend too much time with saying. I better not go red. Oh, well, I don't want to go too green. Um, but I, you know, I, I don't want to lose on a whole shot this, that, and third. And you start thinking about all that, sh uh, excuse me, all that stuff, <laughs> all that stuff, um, you know, and you're thinking about it all the way up until 
the lights come down, you're, you're going to make mistakes. You just go out there, um, you know, go when you see Amber, go when you know it's right, ride it, kind of shut your brain off, make your pass. And if, if it's meant to be, the wind light's going to come on, you know? Hope that answers your, your question. But as far as afterwards, I was, I was really excited afterwards but, <laughs> because it's, and, Darren, you know, and nothing, nothing Darren, let's be honest. anything against Matt Smith. I, 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 I love the guy. He's one of my idols out here. And, um, but to, 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 it's an honor to race against him and to be able to compete and, 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 uh, every once in a while get a win light. Cause he's beaten me a lot more than I've beaten him. So every once in a while to get a win light against him, uh, for a guy like me, it means a lot. Darren, let's be honest. Before that round, he probably couldn't even sit on that bike or strap up his leathers all the way. He was sweating bullets, and nah, I'm just—I'm I'm <laughs> no, totally no, joking. No, no, not me. Man. I, I swear, I swear, I'm good. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> so, so I gotta ask. I mean, you know, there's there's two moments right there. You say you're cool, calm, collective. I saw you in Indy uh, and in Denver. You know, you're just you're kind of you do things your way. And even with that moment you had right there, showing raw emotion, you know, just being you, uh, you know, almost flipping up, saying a, a, you know, a bad word in society, right? You have this, yeah. quote unquote, you have to portray this image and everything. But you, you're you, you're, you know, you have your long hair, you like Miller Lite, or, you know, you're, you're a younger guy in the sport. How do you think, you know, that perception is? Uh, you know, because there's there's this clean cut kind of look in, in HRA, but it looks like we're kind of starting to, you know, accept other things. How do you feel about that? Well, I, I certainly don't want to be a, a bad influence to, to to young kids or anything like that. It's not my intentions at all. But uh, but I didn't, you know, uh, I don't know. I didn't get to where I'm at by, um, you know, trying to do the the normal deal. Cause there's kind of, like you said, there's kind of a cookie cutter routine out here and, and certain things you're supposed to say in posts and certain activities that you're supposed to do. But, um, our, our team's a little different. My situation's a little different. I, you know, I work on my, my own bike. I always have, um, I'm very involved in my own program. I'm not a flying guy by any means. Um, you know, I try and take a lot of pride in, in concentrating on, on what I'm doing at the racetrack, meaning like, like as, as far as riding goes, like I want to ride it. I want to be able to mentally data log everything that I'm doing, um, you know, so I can go back and I can personally make changes or work with my tuner to make changes to the motorcycle, make, make, you know, calls that will help the program. And um, so that, that's more in my mind. And, and that, that requires me being myself, you know, I'm, if I gotta if I gotta go buzz away and and do some other thing for like an hour or two, I'm not fully there. So I've always kind of had this image that I don't really um, follow the the code that everybody else does. But but I, I do care about it. Like I said, I don't want to come off like I'm a jerk or something like that. But I'm just I guess I'm just myself. And um, and one thing I've noticed about this sport is it doesn't matter how. Um, how you act or how you portray yourself results are what, what counts. Um, you know, you can, you can play the part all you want and you can do all the, the, the media stuff and you can say all the right things, but if you're not delivering on, on Sunday, then, then, then what's it all for? So Sunday first, have fun and then try and be, try and, you know, save whatever image you have left at the end of the weekend, I guess. <laughs> But I mean, you, you take a look, you say all that, but you take a look at it when you won your first race in Sonoma. I mean, all the people who came up at the top end to congratulate you just goes to show, you know, how well liked you are. So, I mean, I just, this goes to show that you have a pretty positive image in my mind, you know? So well, I, I think that's. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I tried to keep it um, somewhat good on the helmet. The helmet choice was either Copenhagen or Miller Lite. And I don't think anybody would really like the Copenhagen thing. So. <laughs> but so I Copenhagen, but both have been in our sport. Like, no, I mean, you no, look they have, at, but you don't, you don't see tobacco anymore in the sport. That's, that's, I think that's well, still a no-no. So or then you, you still, need to talk. You need to talk. Yeah, I mean, I see it. I'm in the pits, and I mean, 95 percent of the guys out there. Hopefully, nobody that I know is watching this, but including myself. I mean, sorry, we chew. Like, I mean, I yeah. live in North Dakota. I mean, I was in the military, I and mean, it's what we do. But yeah. This, Darren, don't make that page. You don't. You yeah. wouldn't understand. I'm trying to quit. Ill. Are you sensitive? 
I heard, I heard it's, no, I heard it was I heard it was nasty. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, you it, try it. It's you the can... hardest. Hey, but I will say this. I will say this to, to any any young guys out there watching that are thinking about starting up chewing tobacco. Don't or smoking. Do it. <laughs> don't do it. Don't, don't do it. Do it. It is the hardest thing in the world to quit. You can you can quit you you know you can quit uh like chewing your fingernails you can quit eating junk food that's that's easy compared to quitting chewing tobacco if you don't believe me go go listen to one of Stone Cold Steve Austin's old interviews about chewing tobacco it's it's a terrible thing it's, it's horrible I started it in first time and and it was peer pressure and I haven't quit since and it's been ten years and I'd I'd love to quit but it's really hard so don't do it. It's if not I cool. could go back to the first time I did it, I threw up. Okay, yeah, that's how bad it is. Like that's how. Well, obviously there was other reasons why I even was like, oh, this seems like a good idea. But right. I mean, right. I would if I could go back. I'd never start it again. But it's a, it's a. Ner I do it when I get nervous. It's a nervous habit for me. Or if I'm yeah. traveling a lot, it just keeps me awake. It's like it's like chewing sunflower seeds. Right? Yeah, it's just one of those things you you just kind of do it. But if you're out there, don't do it. Uh, there you go. I mean, there's your new there's your new promotional tool is talking about kids. Don't do tobacco. Don't do this. I mean, they, there you go. I mean, we just created another marketing tool for you, Joey. Um, that would actually be a this. really that would be a really good reason for me to quit if I quit and then I started doing that. But you can't do that unless if you're still chewing, you know. So I'd have to quit, which that's probably a good thing. I might actually. You got me thinking about that now. Maybe that's something that I'll All right. seriously consider. It's Tuesday night. This is what you got to do. Go buy a log right now and just put as much of it in your mouth at one time <laughs> and just keep doing it. And then, then you'll get gut rot and all this bad stuff will happen. I can see, I can see Kenny Koretsky sitting here. He's on here <laughs> laughing because he's like, yes, please, someone film this so we can see it. Uh, <laughs> but just, I mean, I'm talking, take just a big greaser and just stick it in the side and do it and then you'll quit because you'll be like yeah. man I, that's enough of doing that you, yeah. look darren's like what are you guys even talking about I'm, darren I'm you wouldn't understand I'm blown, yeah i'm blown away just don't don't do it <laughs> if you're out there if you're listening if you got the bad habit please stop but joey okay let's get back on track joey for you what does the future look like for joey where can we follow joey where can we support you how can we help you get your message out to people and your new message about don't doing tobacco uh, so how, how can you like follow me? Well, I, I, I'm on Facebook. I'm not on Twitter. I have an Instagram that I'm terrible at keeping up with. Um, but yeah, fa Facebook mostly, honestly, is how is how you keep up with me. I've got um, I've got a, a killer uh, media girl, Sadie, uh, with SR Driven Media, and she keeps up my Joey Gladstone page, and I keep up my Joseph Gladstone page, my my personal one. And um, I'm I'm normally a pretty private guy uh, when it comes to my, like you know my private life, but. Uh, but every once in a while, I'll post something on there. But um, but yeah, it never hurts to shoot me like a Facebook message, and um, you know, hopefully I see it, or hopefully I'm not in the shop too busy and I can see it and I get back to you. But um, but yeah, other other than that, hopefully y'all can come out to the uh, to your next closest NHRA race and come out and and see me in person because I love to talk to the fans. I love to talk to the future racers and. I'd love to share my story about what, you know, what I've gone through to, to, to get to where I'm at. But um, as far as the future, you were asking about the future for me. Is that, was that what you were asking as well? Yes. Yeah. The, 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 as far as the future, um, I guess I don't really plan on, on going anywhere for, from pro stock for right now. I don't see myself moving in. certainly don't see myself getting in a car. I don't even, wouldn't even know how to do a burnout in a car. I've never <laughs> driven one down the racetrack. So I, uh, I've always been a motorcycle guy. As long as I'm drag racing, I'll probably be on a motorcycle. Um, I've certainly had some of my crazy friends at the racetrack tell me that I need to get into a pro mod or a pro stock car. But like I said, um, I, I, I'm a motorcycle guy and, uh, and things are the way things are going right now and, and how much fun I'm having learning about the, uh, like the tuning aspect and the, and getting a pro stock bike down the racetrack in as perfect of a manner as you can, um, you know, chasing that perfection. I don't think I'll ever go anywhere from pro stock. And when I do, it's probably going to be when I retire and I go do some, do go do something else. 
Well, Joey, you know, you mentioned talking to people about what you've been through. I mean, I don't know how much time we have, but I mean, can we get a little bit of that story? I mean, I think this is the perfect show to kind of talk about that, you know, just kind of, you know, your trajectory into pro side motorcycle and kind of the, the obstacles you have to go over to get to where you are now. Can you, can you fill us in on that? Yeah, yeah, sure. I, um, I grew up around drag racing. Uh, my dad drag race cars uh, here and there, probably like four or five times a year. And we would do uh, uh, maybe one or two national events a year. But uh, and and I love going to those. Those are the big the big deal ones. But we do a lot of um, you know uh, regional races and uh, Super Chevy shows over at Maple Grove and stuff like that. So I fell in love with the the sport at Maple Grove. And growing up, I was always the smallest kid in my class. So I like by the time I got uh, you know to about 12, 13 years old, and we were going to some a couple of NHRA races like national events. I saw that you know riders like Angel were were on the smaller side and. And a couple of the other, even a couple of the guys out there, Craig Treble, he's, he's you know, a, a smaller statured guy. Uh, and I saw these guys are out there and they're doing something like, like something big and their, you know, their size is something that's beneficial. Where normally you don't get that unless you're in something like wrestling, which I did as well. But, nice. um, you know, normally in like in things like football and basketball, you can't do that. So, um, so I, I decided I was like, yeah, man, that'd be really cool. That's a dream that, that I could see myself doing. So. When my dad gave me the choice to get a junior, I was kind of behind the eight ball for the juniors. Anyway, I was already like 12 or 13 years old. So by the time he gave me the option for a junior or a dirt bike, I chose a dirt bike, learned how to ride on a dirt bike, and then got, got you know, broke a couple bones, never got too serious into motocross, but learned how to ride a motorcycle. And then when I was 16, bought a junkyard bike, went to my local track, which was Cecil County at the time, so we'd move to Delaware. And uh, dra- uh, we just bracket raced it. And uh, did that for like a year, maybe nine months, and then got a faster bike, found a class in, uh, a, in a motorcycle sanctioning body that I could race in, got my butt kicked for like six months, and, uh, st- and then finally started going rounds, and then had some success in that class, put a turbocharger on it, had some success in the next class. Um, after that, I got offered a ride on a, on a very successful pro street team, which was like no wheelie bar, uh, street tire, you know, 225 mile an hour, crazy bikes. And, uh, I, I did that for six years and we raced two sanctioning bodies and we won eight, eight championships in those five or six years. Cause we were winning both sanctioning bodies every year. And, uh, that whole time while I was doing that, I was I had got my pro stock license on a, on a friend's bike. So I had my license and, and in 2012 rented a bike from Matt Smith um, for, you know, for one race for Gainesville and then did Atlanta. We loved it. So we did Atlanta the, that, you know, later, later that year. And uh, then I was gone from pro stock for like five years and then finally got the call to come up and do a part-time schedule in, in like 2017 or something like that. And uh, then the guy, the guy that I was racing with got hooked on pro stock. So we did the whole year. That was Joe Riccardi. Uh, we did the whole year that and finished number nine. So now I'm hooked because I know I can, now I can kind of compete and get in the top 10. So we did a lease deal with the underdogs and the Stofers for half the year. And, um, and then by the second half of the year, I had already spent a lot of time with Corey Reed and his family. And they had, uh, you know, taken me in like uh like a brother to Corey and we started hanging out to going fishing a lot. Um, and Corey's just like, man, why don't you just, he's like, I don't feel like racing for the rest of the year. Why don't you just ride my bike and finish out the rest of the year. And then the year after that, we, we started our, we had our own two bike team, Corey and I, and the, and then we did the V twin thing for a couple of years. We ended up actually taking over our engine program. Um, I, I assembled the engines for a year or two. And, uh, and then we, uh, the Vance and Hines were coming out with this new four valve engine. This brings us all the way up to like maybe two years ago. Um, the, uh, Vance and Hines was doing this new four valve thing and it sounded really appealing. And, uh, and there was just a simple conversation that they thought that they could deliver some really competitive motorcycles. And we, we went for it and we, we started out good last year. And um, then ended up struggling at the back half of the year. And you saw what happened with Corey and I, that, that horrific wreck that, excuse me, I'm just going to plug my phone in. It's getting low. 
but uh, that horrific wreck that that Corey and I had in Charlotte, um, and that was just kind of like the, uh, like an end cap to end like one of the worst seasons that we had because I wrecked earlier that year and did this to myself and this and you know tore myself all up and then I was barely recovered and then Corey and I collided and then Corey got tore up so that was that was a really hard year and I'm. And I, I think it kind of shows a lot about Corey's character and and my dedication to where it's not we're not going to let it beat us. We came out this year swinging and uh, tested a lot over the winter, and the here and then here we are today. The results are you know the proof's in the pudding. You know we we you know you put in enough time and effort and and things start to go your way. I guess. Hopefully that wasn't too long and drawn out. That was just, no. that's kind of like the, that's kind of like the five minute story of, of my life as far as racing goes. Nah, thank you. Thank you. And it's like, yeah. it's like you said, you mentioned everything you've been through. I heard about the crash last year that you went through. And then obviously we know about the crash from Corey Reed and Charlotte last year. It's cool to see. I know Corey mentioned on the broadcast on Sunday that yesterday was the one year anniversary of that crash. And so to see where you guys one year, one year later winning races and having great success, it's really cool to see, man. So congratulations. Yeah. Thank you for that. And yeah. And, um, I, I didn't even realize that that it was the one year anniversary. I figured that the Charlotte race, like this next weekend, would be the one year anniversary. But I guess it was on like a different part of the year. Mm -hmm. But um, for for that to like, I think yeah, I think like you said, Monday was the anniversary of the crash. So for for us to get a little redemption be because of what happened to us in, in Charlotte, not not just the crash, but when we got all the way to the finals and and then yeah. the kill switch came out when I'm you know way out ahead of 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 you know. My, my fellow competitor when I was, you know, racing her, um, that was, that was heartbreaking. But then again, like we, once we got the first win this year in Sonoma, we were like, I, we wouldn't have it any other way. If, if Corey was in the hospital when I got that first win, it would not have been the same. So, um, and vice versa. Like, you know, we, we want to be there for each other. We spend every day together. Like, you know, I saw him, I, I saw him a couple hours ago. We see each other every day. We have a shop together. So, we, you know, when you do everything together, you want to win together. So, um, and then for it to come full circle and one day before, like, you know, one day before the anniversary on my daughter's birthday for, yeah. um, for, for us to get that win, that was, that was a day that we'll never forget. It was very, very special. Well, Joey, uh, like I said, again, congratulations on the win. Congratulations on, you know, taking, uh, the points lead right now and everything that's going on for you. I mean, it looks like it's going to, you know, turn down to be a barn burner here in pro stock motorcycle. We don't know what we're going to see, what's next, who's, who's going to grab the next win, but uh, it's always exciting to see great fields in NHRA drag racing and competitive racing and side-by-side -side action. Absolutely. This, this season's the end of the season. Everybody's going to want to watch out for it because I can guarantee you, there's going to be some mix ups in this in this whole points leader debate. Like um, maybe I'm the first points leader of the countdown, but I cert I, uh, you know, I don't want to doubt myself, but I pretty much guarantee you I'm not going to be the last points leader of the countdown. Like I mean, I'm not saying I won't win the championship. Um, you know, it's going to be a fight to the bitter end. But we saw what can happen um, like in Indy when Matt was like number four or five and he he came back and. Um, and by the end of it, he's 40 points up on everybody, you know, and then actually got points taken away from him when the countdown started. So um, that Pomona thing is definitely going to shake things up. And there's so many solid teams and competitors that it's any anybody could 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 win. You know, I I could have lost first round. I was number eight qualifier, like you said. Um, Hector Jr. is a wonderful competitor. He was he was nine. We, so we were tit for tat. I think if he'd have gone green. You know, we it would have been a really good race if he wouldn't have shut off. If we might not have been talking about this right now, so um, you never know what can happen. So everybody, stay tuned. I'm excited about it. Um, I'm hoping it goes my way, but we'll see. Well, hey Joey, I just want to say, you know, well, actually, I'm gonna ask this instead because um, you were about the same age. So find a question for yeah. me. We're about the same age, and so my era of pro style motorcycle was like Reggie Shower, Sean Gann, Craig Treble, uh, Angel Antron. Who was who was like your uh, your kind of like your favorite one to root for back in those times, from early to mid 2000s? Who were you going for? Early to mid 2000s um, was Angel. Angel, uh, okay. that, that, I was uh, An Angel. Um, as I got more into the sport of motorcycle drag racing, 
I, I quickly fell in love with uh, Larry, the Spider-Man McBride's whole image. I spent some time in AMA Pro Star and Drag Bike, and he was always there, and he always treated me with so much respect and love. And, I mean, he's like, in, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're such good buddies right now. Like, we talk all the time. So uh, he quickly became my hero. I still love Anjel. So look up to Anjel a lot. She's, you know, uh, she's a, a very, very awesome competitor. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, I, I I looked up to to Angel as far as pro stock motorcycle goes. It was Angel and Antron. Antron was so well spoken. Um, Reggie Showers was uh, just such an amazing human. You know, it was he still is. He's but uh, he's he's an amazing human being, and his story is awesome. Um, and yeah, I those what, growing up watchers and Craig Treble, and uh, it was a, just a bonus that a couple you know when I when I grew up and started racing pro stock motorcycle that I got to work pretty closely with Craig Treble and Michael Phillips. He was one yeah. of my heroes too. Um, and I never know how he was going to be, but man, am I blessed <laughs> to be working with him right now. He is, he is so much fun to not only race with, but to win with. I mean, I can't wait till he, uh, until I'm there when he wins his next race, because if he's that excited when I win one, I can only imagine what he's going to be like when he wins one. Well, Joey, it's been an honor and a pleasure to have you for the first time on the Competition Plus Power, the late night show of drag racing. So before we let you go, I'm going to take my final sip of uh, Monster Juice, and uh, we're going to let you go, and we want you to enjoy your night, and can't wait to see you at the next racetrack. Yeah, this is, hey, it was great hanging out with you guys. Thank you for having me on. Cheers, everybody. And that was Joey Gladstone, we are happy to have him on, but we're going to break, and next we'll be talking to Kenny Kretzky, the Chaos family. We're going to be uh, talking with them about everything that they've got going on in drag racing and what they thought of this past weekend. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I don't know about you guys, but I cannot wait to have my nice uh, Scotty Cannon shirt so I can sport that thing or maybe hang it on the wall. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Kenny, how's it going? Hey, guys. How are you? I couldn't get on my computer because I'm computer illiterate, so I try to do it on my phone. And, you know, it's late at night, so my girls in the office aren't here to help me, and Kyle's not here. So hopefully you can hear me and see me on the telephone. I'll get yes, here and see you can. You got it, Sam. Should okay? Yes, it is. Um, so what was that? I couldn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just wondering, um, looking back over what this weekend was for you guys and the anticipation uh, leading into this weekend, how do you think it went? Oh, I think it went well. I mean, the last four months, four and a half months, it's really been crazy. Just so much going on. I'm, I'm literally just getting home now. We finally got the place cleaned up, and uh, we tested yesterday, tested some top fuel cars and funny cars, and so that put us behind a little bit, but it was well worth it, and the weather's still beautiful here. Uh, just a lot going on the last couple months, um, and that national event came up quick, man, and thank God the weather was good. Really turned out nice. It was a great event. It was a safe event. Uh, really no accidents to speak of. That's all I wanted was a nice, safe race. Wow. I mean, you talk about the life of a track owner. You, th you, talk, you think about it. The race ended on Sunday, but you just said you just got home today. I mean, that just goes to show how much work actually goes into owning a track, I would say. 
Yeah, real, a lot more than I ever thought, to be honest with you. You know, all the years I raced, 35 years I raced full time. And I always just didn't either fly in or drive to the racetrack and go in and race and never thought about what went on to uh, own a track. And I got a lot of praise for these track owners. These guys work hard to, to put on a good, safe race, you know, and then the NHRA comes in and preps the, the way they do the national events. So it was interesting. It really was just dealt with a lot of people, you know, it was sold out on Saturday and, uh, uh, Friday was huge. Sunday was huge. So never really dealt with that many people. You know, if that was our first national event. We we had a no prep race and we had a PDRA race and they were good. But nothing like this. This this was this was crazy. I'm happy for Joey to win the race there at Maple Grove. And um, I didn't get a chance to get a lot of the racing because I was too busy picking up trash. <laughs> oh my god you've never seen so much trash in your life man i might start chewing tobacco i was listening to your whole story crazy i definitely wouldn't recommend that um i mean i would just say you got to get more videos with kyle you know on the back of the, the the trash truck or him loading the freezers and stuff like that don't pick up chewing tobacco well that is uh, true uh Kyle's worked really, really hard at Maple Grove, and the other racers know that and appreciate it. My son, Ken, has worked really, really hard. And we have a whole team there, you know, Shane and Betsy and Sarah. There's a lot of people behind the scenes that run these big racetracks. I mean, it's a big property. I mean, the Lewis family and the Stover family had it for all them years, and uh, we just wanted to bring it to another level and keep it going. And... Uh, just to give you an idea, we redid all the suites and new air conditioners and, uh, you know, new roofs and flags and asphalt. It's crazy. I mean, it really came together. But, but the last week and a half, it came quick, I'll tell you. And you mentioned all those updates right there. Um, and those, those are a lot of updates, a lot of great updates. DRC, who's in the comments, was there. And he said he could literally see the changes, you know, from this year to last year. Uh, can you fill us in on, you know, what's to come? What's more updates to come at Maple Grove? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. We're, we're in the process of putting new electric in. Um, where It will be run in uh, to the fence, and then we'll do the underground utility work. And there's going to be L new LED lighting uh, on the track itself. Uh, it's a big investment, but it needs to be done. And uh, right now there's a generator that runs the lighting there. A lot of people don't know that. And um, we couldn't get that done in time for the national event. But we try to prior toward, you know, like put everything together, like what was more important. Uh, um, we did the end of the track. We made it wider where you turn off to the left to come out the return road, that was real important. Um, the lighting down there's all been replaced. That's all LED lighting up the return load, road. Um, probably about 75 new LED lights. We did the uh, tear down barn, the scale, all through the pits with a lot of LED lighting. But the track itself, that LED lighting is important. That's our next big investment. And there's more blacktop work to be done. And we'll do that ourselves. Uh, it was just a thrash for the national event. It, it was exciting. I'll tell you what. I mean, I don't know if you saw it on TV. The, the TV was huge. The, the NHRA on Fox. And uh, the the, um, the viewership was huge. It set an all-time record. Uh, so if you saw the announcement today, uh, 2.8 million people watched it. 1.6 something. Uh, when it was the lead in to the uh, NFL race, uh, NFL football game. So it was exciting. It was great for our sponsors and the people in the suites. We have a lot of new suite sponsors. Sunoco's in there, Penske's in there, uh, People's Lease, which uh, came from uh, Erica and uh, Richard Freeman, helped us out with some sponsorship there. We redid the suites, all new air conditioning, new flooring, um, a new caterer uh, Dose Clemente came in did all the food I think I gained probably about three pounds this weekend <laughs> uh, just eating at all the sweets and the, a lot of the the the, uh, the owners like Cruz Pendergon John Forrest 
Bobby Task had big hospitality with his new sponsor, PPG. And that was interesting. So it was, it, it was, it's a learning curve. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll get it figured out. Uh, we just bought a new John Deere tractor. Uh, it's going to, for the tire rotator, just got off the maple grove today. And uh, a new scrubber, a new, uh, you know, dra- the rubber dragger on the back, a new John Deere tractors to cut the grass. So uh, I don't mean to be moving around this phone like this. It's just hard on the cell phone. I apologize for that. But um, it's interesting. And then tomorrow's a new day. We'll get ready for the next race. Comes in town tomorrow. So we have a question coming in from Drag Racing Central, one of our good listeners. He says, what about the traffic situation? Well, we met with the chief uh, at Brecknock Township. We studied that all day yesterday and on Saturday. We got to somehow try to figure out a new traffic plan or maybe get the state of Pennsylvania and some kind of grant to open up a couple of the roads. Uh, we know what some of the problem was, and that we'll correct that immediately. Uh, just trying to get these people in all these different lots. It's a lot of different lots to, to uh, park in. There's a lot of cars. Holy mackerel, a lot of cars. <laughs> I was out there collecting money. If you look at the social media, I was I opened up the third lane just to get people to come in and park because I could see the traffic was crazy. I and mean, I was very fortunate. I came in with a police escort, but I still waited a half an hour. Um, I had strobe lights on one of my vehicles from being in the construction business, and I came up came up the opposite lane. So I was able to get in, but it still took me a, a while to get in there from Reading. Uh, from now on, I'm just going to stay at the track, but uh, you got to get there early. Like Sunday, there was no problem. Uh, Sunday, I got there, I don't know, about 8 o'clock for the track walk. And uh, I had no problem, came right in. So people that got there late uh, had a problem. I mean, there was people coming at 12 o'clock at new time after the national anthem was already played. So that was a good question. But Kyle's addressing that. Kenny's addressing that. We'll get it figured out. We always do. And um, I got an idea to put another gate in another location. We're going to work on that. So um, I hope that answers the question. I feel bad for them people that had to stay and walk. I'm sorry. You're making me laugh. But, man, I'll tell you what. That place was sold out, man. I'm telling you. I've been to a lot of drag races in 35 years. I have never seen nothing like that on Saturday. It was yeah, great. It, it was it exciting. Was. It was, it was pretty cool to see on TV. It was pretty badass. And I like how you mentioned you were collecting money in the park a lot. It kind of reminds me of uh, Tommy Franklin, who owns uh, Virginia Motorsports Park. He was in the park a lot on Sunday doing the same exact thing. So that's kind of cool that you're doing that, too. Um, no, you can go. Try to get the cars. Try to get the cars. And, you know, it's funny. I mean, I opened up a third lane, and we we're handing out tickets. And it was $15 to park. And it should have been $20 to park. That way you didn't. I mean, the no prep stuff, the PDR stuff was all 30 bucks. And, um, you know, parking is just a, a part of it. But, you know, look, look, it was up to me. I mean, at the end of the day, it probably should be free. But, I mean, you know, you, you got to make money to run these tracks. I mean, they're so expensive to run. People don't realize the insurance. What a cost for the insurance. Um, you know, the liquor insurance, the food insurance, uh, the NHRA insurance. I mean, it just, it, there's just so many costs. I never, I really never knew in all these years what these track owners went through. I mean, really, it's a lot of work. I mean, I'm, mm. my ass is dragging. I'm not going to lie to you. Kyle, Kyle hasn't been home. He still hasn't been home since Sunday. And he's got to get ready and go to Charlotte tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it looks like it wore you out, man. It, it, it did. I mean, we'll, we'll get there. I mean, just the, the trash under the grandstands and then the pits. And I mean, the racers were really, really nice. I mean, they, everyone cleaned up their mess. We, you know, we have two garbage trucks up there and we had a couple different services cleaning up. And uh, that's just one aspect of it. You know, you're dealing with the food, the beer, you know, you got to, you know, the uh, kegs of beer have to go back. Uh, you have to count everything. Um, you know, my daughter Taylor, she turned 28 today 
and she's today's her birthday and um she actually was a school teacher and she left her job about uh about a month ago to come run the food and beverage and uh she did a great job and my wife karen's been doing it full time i guess it's funny all the years i raced full time i couldn't get my wife to come watch me race but yet trial races she comes all the races that part i haven't figured out <laughs> <now>. <laughs> Yeah, plus she's working her butt off. She just got home from Maple Grove not even an hour ago. It's about 64 mile, 64 mile drive for us each way. So I think tomorrow I'm going to bring my bus up there for this weekend. We have the ET finals up there this weekend. So we had a uh, the Stein race last weekend and the NHRA Nationals this, you know, this past weekend. Then we have a big ET finals with, I think there's 13 tracks represented to come to do the race. I, I don't really know that much about um, the planning of some of these races as far as who's booked in. And we just had Rugged Mania there where they do that whole running thing and uh, go through the water and uh, the tunnels and the mud and all that. That was pretty cool. That was kind of new to me because anyone knows me, I'm not getting up early in the morning to work out. That's not happening. But I was driving around a scooter watching all them people running, man. I, I mean, I got to tell you, they're really in shape. So there's, it, it's new to me, you know. There's all these different events, and we have the Oktoberfest coming up. That's a big uh, concert with the radio station. I think there's like six bands there, a couple of big rock and roll. I mean, not rock and roll, country western bands. So it was a thrash, you know. We got the liquor license. The transfer was done last Wednesday, so that was a thrash. Um, you know, cutting the grass. You don't want to cut the grass, you know, like, before the national event, you got to cut it like on Monday or Tuesday. And I don't know if you guys followed it, but the rain was just massive on Monday and Tuesday. We got a ton of rain. And I saw the forecast was great, but I was scared it was going to be too muddy. So uh, Rich and Mark and uh, Mike, they they were on them big 15-foot uh, batwing um, mowers. We bought brand new John Deere's. Uh, I was up there myself. I actually got stuck in the mud Wednesday night. They had to come get me with a back on and tell me out about midnight. I was cutting grass in the middle of the night. That's that's the best time to cut the grass because no one bothers me. So, and it's a big place. You know, you figure you're cutting 300 acres a day. I mean, 300 acres, that's a lot of grass to cut. Yeah. And when we bought the place, no one ever explained that to me, I tell you that. So, of course, Kyle says... You must not read the fine print. The so, you know, Kyle's probably watching now. Thanks, Kyle. So, I mean, the pretty much the new name for the track is the House of Chaos. And, I mean, from you having that name and now your son having it, you just mentioned your wife coming to the, you know, racetrack now uh, to watch your son race. What does that mean for you guys to have or mean for you, you know, to originally have that name given to you and now passed down? Well, it's interesting. You know, I mean, um, unfortunately, that my kids uh, uh, followed in my footsteps. You know, Kenny runs the big uh, Peter Bell and Kenworth trucks and drag racing. And Kyle's always raced. And something you know, we started Kyle and the junior dragsters. And he walked, worked his way up the routes, up, you know, uh, right up the comp preliminary. Ran, he ran it up in Charlotte several years ago. And I knew he had it in the system to race full time. But, you know, Kyle's pretty good at juggling things. You know, you have to multitask. Um, we're all pretty good at that. Uh, family businesses are not easy. That I'll honestly tell you. And there's a lot of uh, a lot of arguing and fighting going on. I mean, I I get blamed for everything. <laughs> but Bobby Ben will tell you that's why it is calling me dad. He doesn't say Kenny. He doesn't say Kyle. He said dad. Everyone knows me out there as either dad or pop. So um, yeah, it's interesting. Um, now my grandson uh, has got a new junior dragster. And hopefully next year he'll start racing. He's eight years old. So that will be interesting as the third generation comes into the sport. I'm actually real excited about that. Um, you know, until you have grandkids, you just can't understand. Um, I, I love my kids, but my grandkids really just, I just, I just love it. You know, they were, they were actually at Maple Grove. They were, they were up in the suites, uh, uh, we have two suites up top, uh, and the kids had a blast. They were actually 
uh, him and his friends were all guessing who was going to win. And, and we also had the honor of having Brigadier General uh, Max Stinger uh, there uh, from the Pentagon. And really nice guy to have the high branch of the military there and the Pennsylvania State Police. And they're going to try to help me with some stuff in the future with the traffic planning and some of the logistics. It's a big thing, just trying to get that many cars in at a, at a, at a small period of time. So that's kind of like a little chaotic. And uh, let me just do a shout out to that uh, Alan Reinhardt and Joe Costello. They do a great job with the announcing, keep the fans going. And, um, you know, my family was really, really honored. It was a lot of fun. I probably just okay. rambled on and answered about 20 questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 you're okay. I love it. I love it. But I know I know you're a businessman. And I remember back in the day, uh, growing up watching Drag Race, I remember you uh, you bought Clay Milliken's top field team back in the day uh, for a little while. I think that was like 2005 or something like that. Um, and oh, buying a racetrack is, is a huge investment, I have to say. For you as a businessman, you know, how do you know, you know, going into buying Reading, how do you know that was be a good investment for you and buying that racetrack? That's a good question. Um, you know, we thought about it long and hard. I mean, the negotiations were about eight, nine months long. My son, Kenny, handled everything. And Kyle and Kenny did all their due diligence. Um, it, it was a big undertaking. It's a big property, 484 acres. as a bar and restaurant, cam campgrounds. And it's huge. It's just absolutely huge property. And, um, you know, we're just hard workers. I mean, we'll make it work no matter what, no matter what, we'll make it work. Um, we're just trying to honor all the agreements and all the contracts that they had through uh, 2022. And then after the end of this year, we'll sit down, we'll go over and go over each agreement next year and have to make some changes because, you know, you, you've got to make money doing this because you have a payroll you have the insurance, the workman's comp, the fuel, the electric bills, the, the social media. There's full-time people due to social media. Sarah does a great job. Uh, we hired a new fellow, Matt Bud, came over from Nitro Graphics, which was Kyle's company, which we bought Nitro Graphics from Kyle so we can internalize everything. So which all the companies are internalized now, and that way everyone works for one common goal. And it makes it easier for Kenny and Kyle to, to just to do the signage up there and the wraps. I mean, from from Pet Boys to Penske to Summit. I mean, it, it, it is it, it's crazy. You see all the signs up there. It's it's crazy. And then the flags and uh, the flags were pretty cool. They got them done on Thursday. We have to redo some of them. So I mean, I don't I don't know. At the end of the day, I mean, if we make money, that's great. If we don't. Hopefully we can at least break even. The local racers have been great. They really support us. Our our nitro fish test and tune's been great. Um, the Saturday and Sunday races. Well, last Sunday got rained out. The Stein race, David Stein race. We had a memorial race for him. That was actually big Friday and Saturday. Then it rained out on Sunday. But, you know, it's all weather control. So we get good weather like we had last weekend for the Pep Boys Nationals. Um, that helps out a lot. Awesome. You've talked about the different things that are going on at the track and different things you guys are doing. Um, how do you continue to, you know, use your facility and make it user friendly throughout, you know, the entire season uh, instead of just a racing facility? It's a good question. I mean, part of the marketing uh, plan we have is to do other things to utilize the property. Um, for not just test and tune and races, but, you know, we're going to venture into, you know, we did the Lantern light show at night, the Rugged Mania, like I said, a concert coming up in October, the Fall Fest in October. So we're looking at doing more venues like that. Um, you know, it's a big undertaking. You just have to have a lot of people. So we're trying to get the right people in place. And Kenny and Kyle have been interviewing people. And we got a really good, staff up there now but if you want to grow it as you guys know you need more people and it's not so easy there's uh we've interviewed a lot of a lot of people but you gotta have experienced people we just don't have time right now to train people 
to do certain stuff. We're, we're, we're going to do a big concert up there. We, we haven't really announced who it's going to be yet, but it's going to be big. And we're not, anything we do there is going to be big because you can't make any money with a small venue. You know, you really need to bring a big country western, a rock and roll star. You know, something's going to bring in 40, 40 to 50,000 people. But then again, you got to have the traffic plan, the seating, the, the food, the water, the security. Security is real important. Got to make sure everything stays safe. We were very, very blessed at Maple Grove that we had no problems and no issues. Everything was orderly. And, um, you know, we just follow the policy. You know, I'm not going to serve over serve anybody with liquor, with beer, and we, we stick by that plan. And um, as long as you do that, you won't have any problems. Well, Kenny, I just want to thank you and your family for stepping up and taking the reins of owning Maple Grove Raceway. Maple Grove Raceway has had so much history throughout the years of NHRA drag racing. If you guys to step up and continue on the tradition, I just want to say thank you. You can tell you're very passionate about this project. So I, I just want to I want to avert the conversation just a little bit um, because at the end of the day, you are a racer, too. And I want to go back to Phoenix 1990. You know, you, you talk about people have done the double at Funny Car and Top Field, but you did it in Top Field Pro Stock. Just take us back to that weekend and how difficult was it to actually do that, jumping in two totally different cars and qualifying both of them and winning a round in both of them. Let's talk about that. You know, um, my I, I love Top Fuel. I mean, obviously, you talked about the Milligan. We won a couple championships. A great sponsor with Warner Enterprise and Clay and Donna are just great. They ran the business for me and uh, they made it easy for me, you know, um, and having a great sponsor like Warner Enterprise made it easy. But, you know, they're running all ITRA and I was running any tra And uh, so it was hard to go back and forth. I only made a couple races. Um, I always went to the banquets because I always used to like to collect the checks. <laughs> you win the championship, you get the checks. Um, but, um, yeah, I see Clay. I talk to Clay all the time. I saw Don. I didn't have a lot of time to spend with a lot of people with Clay and a lot of teams. And Bob Pascal this weekend, so I was so busy just overseeing some stuff. But, um, you're right. You know, sometimes when you're very passionate about things, like we are, it, it's really not all about making money. Uh, but, you know, you got to make money to cover the bills. But at the end of the day, I do it because I love it. And as far as, you know, I love Pro Stock. I love Top Fuel. I love Funny Car. You know, Bob Task is one of my best friends. And Tony Pendergon and Bob, and I talk every day. I was always a sponsor of Tony Pendergon also. Not only that, we're you know, a sponsor of Bob Task. As long as he's racing, we'll remain to be a sponsor with Bobby. Um, Bobby's been a very big help to me and my family. So... It's interesting, you know, how the, all these racers stopped up to really stepped up to help us. I mean, uh, just a shout out, you know, for John Force, you know, uh, what he said, and Alexa and Leah Pruitt and Ron Caps, every one of them that texted me or called me or came up to us. Yeah, so that means a lot. And when we think about it, comparing now to then uh, when you were racing, uh, would you would you want to step, you know, into the ball game of today's racing and to what we have now? I mean, how competitive it is and, and what we're seeing on the racetrack. Do you think, you know, um, you know, now versus then, would you want to be a part of that? Look, we're with a uh, great team with uh, Ken Black and Judy and, uh, you know, Greg Anderson and Dave Connolly. And what a crew there. I mean, the, the reason why I did what I did is I went to college and had the opportunity to win. Uh, Eddie Grenache and I, we rented motors from a lot of different people. And, uh, you know, it's hard. It's very competitive. I mean, I've, I, I, I was a runner up to Greg Anderson at the 50th honor uh, U.S. Nationals. Boy, if you want to win a race, that's one of them. And uh, so, you know, I think about all that stuff. No, I, you know, I, I'm always looking at different opportunities. I help a few teams now. I, you know, I'm kind of like behind the scenes. I don't really talk about it much except with Bob Tasca. And I'd like to see Tony drive a funny car again. He's such a great driver. 
Um, but you know, you never know. I mean, I, I if the right opportunity came up, I mean, I have no problem being a track owner and a team owner if that's what you're asking me. I mean, I'm, um, you know, obviously, you know, I, I try to spend a lot of time with with Kyle. Um, Kyle and I butt heads all the time. I love him to death. We just don't get along all the time. Um, as far as my son Kenny, I really want him to. I want him to bring the big Peterbilt, the Kenworth out to Maple Grove and. You know, we have a big truck race there in, um, I think it's in October. It's called the Keystone Nationals big truck race. And uh, we'll, hopefully we'll run our truck. But that's kind of like my passion. I like the big Peter Bell, the Kenworths. You know, I like the jet cars. I like the um, the show part of it. You know, it's, it's the entertainment business, I think, that I like. You know, and we have such good cars in any tray. Like every one of these funny car drivers and, and uh, top fuel co- uh, the drivers and personal guys, the sportsman guys, it's, it's really just a good group of people. You know, they just want to go race and put on the show. And with that big crowd on Friday, Saturday and Sunday, man, them drivers loved it. We loved it. it and the fans loved it. You, you wouldn't believe, I'm not a social media guy, but people have been sending me and texting me stuff, you know, since Sunday that, that the fans had a blast. I mean, we, I didn't get out of there Sunday night till like, I don't know, 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. And then you know, we're back there first thing Monday morning. So, um, you know, you, you got to you gotta have a passion and love the sport. Back to the Pro Stock and Top Fuel, I used to enjoy that. The Top Fuel car was awesome. And uh, the Pro Stock car was, was pretty cool. Just never really had the power to compete. Uh, like maybe twice I had, when Tommy Hammond's running me motors, we were pretty competitive, and, and Larry Morgan was always straight up with me. We always said, but if I had Greg Anderson horsepower back then, we, we would have won 20, 30 races. No doubt in my <laughs> mind, we would have won. I mean, they got big-ass horsepower, man. And and, and no one's going to outwork No one's gonna outwork Greg Anderson. I got to tell you, man, he's, he is unbelievable. I actually talked to Greg about two hours ago when I was driving back here just to find out how the motors were going. And when Jason Line works hard, they all work hard. I mean, it, it's a tough sport. I mean, he, pro stocks are pretty neat class, but it, people, the, 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 the pro stock followers really know how hard it is to run pro stock. And it's hard. Top fuel, funny car, it's all hard. I mean, you look and watch the big crew chiefs, you know, and Dickie Venables. And, you know, I love all them guys. I'm friends with all them guys. Um, Zippy, who does. You know, Mike Knapp, who does Bobby Tasco. These are smart, smart guys. John Schaefer. I mean, Ron Caps, his guys. Uh, it, it, it was just, it's hard to explain. You guys got to come to one of these races. I mean, Ron Caps, Antron Brown, you name it. They were all up there signing autographs. I mean, they just appreciate a nice place to come and race, a clean place. A fun place. You know, we put a whole new acoustic sound system in there. You know, it's crazy. I can do a whole track with acoustics, but I can't get on the damn computer to get you on the phone. I'm on my cell phone. I am. I, I need to go to school or something to get someone to help me with this stuff. So, hey, Bobby, I would, I would. Me, you got to go on here. You got to go on here. He doesn't understand. Like, I, I know how to check my emails and stuff like that, but that's about the extent of it. Computer I have illiterate. I have no idea how to do any of that stuff either. But hey, Kenny, I want to ask you. Well, not really a question, but I think we should start a maybe a petition um, <laughs> to get Maple Grove to be called the Keystone Nationals again. What do you guys think? You agree or not? I think Maple Grove should be called the Keystone Nationals well, again. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Back uh, when it was Keystone, now I think it's a great name. Um, you know, we, we are talking with people, some liaisons with the state. Um, with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I mean, right now, it's a lot going on. You know, they're going to vote for new governors soon and the midterms and all this stuff. It's a lot going on. It's hard to get through to different people. Um, you know, look, Pep Boys is a great sponsor. So the Pep Boys National is pretty cool. Um, they had a lot of new signage up there. Um, I think that agreement's for another year or two. I'm not really sure. Uh, that's the trade deal. Uh, but there's a lot, lot of people that really, really took notice for a long time. And our phones have been ringing off the hook, which is really, really is cool. 
you know, when people call and say, hey, we want the suite for another year or two years. People have already ordered their tickets for next year. It's unbelievable. It really is unbelievable. <clears throat> Plus, Karen upgraded all the food, so the food is great there. Just not hamburgers and hot. It's a good quality. They brought in U.S. foods, and we have a new deal with Coca-Cola. And, uh, you know, the beer coming on board, like the liquor transfer. Uh, you know, we've, we're following the right direction now. So it can only get better from here. So, I mean, you guys will be really happy. Hopefully you can get here um, and, and, and see the place. Still a bunch of races. We have like eight, ten races left this year. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, they have 350 entries for this Friday and Saturday. That's a lot. Not not as much as oh, this week. I mean, last week was crazy. I mean, the park was unbelievable. I mean, just parking all the rigs. So getting through an experience like this weekend, you know, it's probably a lot of weight lifted off of you guys' shoulders and seeing how, you know, everything works and how how much traffic and how many people are going to be there and the signage and, like you said, everything that you guys have done. So after a weekend like this, I mean, does a guy really need to just take a, a week-long vacation and go to Disneyland or something and kind of relax? I mean, I mean, are you looking to hire on a uh, personal masseuse, you know, from walking and cutting the grass? I mean, what what's the best scenario for a recovery weekend after this past weekend? I mean, you know, we, we thought if, you know, if Kyle won the race, we'd give him off, but he didn't win the race. He went to the semifinals. He's still three and number three in points, which is pretty impressive better than i ever did and um but no i'm um, shane was off today we, we had a test session yesterday mm -hmm. yeah tony stewart raced leah pruitt raced yesterday uh, alexa raced um uh, all the, the coletta cars raced um on monday had a great uh, test session until about three o'clock it started to rain and rained and for about a half hour an hour kind of messed us up but no, there's not going to be any vacations. A um, couple people have a couple days off, but we're like, like I said, we're right into this ET uh, national deal tomorrow. They start parking cars tomorrow, and um, you know we'll get to it. I would have liked to maybe had a, a one week break. You know, when you go back to back with these big races, it it's a lot. We sub out a lot of stuff. I mean, I mean we'll pick up trash and stuff like that. We sub out like underneath the grandstands. You wouldn't believe the mess underneath the under the grandstands so i mean there's just a lot of work going on i mean the blowers the people raking normally you can find me by the trash compactor we have a 40-yard trash compactor me being in the trash business my whole life you know what my motto is your trash is my cash and your <laughs> dirt is my money <laughs> i like that so, i like that you know i you know it, it's just a big undertaking, but you know, it was fun. You know, it's not like, it's not like work. It's not like having a job to me. So, um, anyhow, you'll, you guys will get up there to see it one day and I'm sure Bobby Bennett will be there. And, uh, well, I saw a lot of his people there. I'm sure you saw a lot of pictures and it was pretty cool. I don't know if you saw the drone shots. The drone shots are really awesome. Mm -hmm. So, and Tony Pendergon and, and, and Brian Lums, what, what a great job they do. Um, and, yeah. you know, Tony Stewart was in the booth. I mean, you know, it, it's just amazing how many people viewed that race on Sunday. It was the NFL lead-in. It was, it, it was incredible. It's a shame we had the big fire with Wilkerson with the funny car. That kind of messed up a little bit of live coverage um, towards the end. But it wasn't his fault. I mean, this stuff happened. But uh, we, got, we got nothing but uh, great results from the TV. And that's real important. Our sponsors, you know, Lucas Oil and Chevrolet, they want to see that TV time. That's what it's all about. Yeah. You know what it's like getting yeah. sponsors. It's not easy. Yeah. I believe the numbers were um, 1.6 million watched live, and then it peaked at 2.8 million. I mean, you can't ask for better. Almost beat NASCAR. I mean, you can ask for better, better showing than that. It was absolutely incredible. It was the largest race ever watched. And you know, it's interesting. When Kyle won Charlotte last year, it was the NFL 
and then two, and that was also the uh, we beat that. That was like 1.2, 1.3 million. So hey, look, it's looking great for drag racing, which is great. It's a great sport. Yeah. You know, NHRA is a great organization. I mean, like anyone else, they're trying to run a business. I understand that. They're trying to run a business. We're trying to run a business. I mean, you guys are trying to run a business. And it's very competitive. Um, everyone's doing their best. It's a lot of hard work. Um, a lot of stuff goes into running this national event. So I got to tell you, I, I mean, you know, the setup. I mean, when Fox comes in, I mean, they were there last Monday. So here I am trying to cut the grass. I got tractor trailers, Fox, you know, NHRA Fox truck driving around. And I'm saying, Listen, I'm trying to cut the grass. Stay on the asphalt. Stay on the asphalt. And it, I mean, it's a production. And I got to give the NHRA a lot of credit. Uh, yes. Josh Peterson and Ned Wilder. It, it's a big deal. I mean, I don't agree with a lot of stuff they do. I mean, we argue and fight. I mean, I've been doing this stuff for a long time. So I know everyone in the NHRA. And I have a great report with everybody. But, uh, man, it's a big job. They put on it. You know, I say it's the big show. You know, it's like a traveling carnival. It's it's big. I mean, getting all them rigs. Like, think about it, you know. Them guys tested on Monday and packed up on Tuesday, and bam, they're on their way to Charlotte, you know, and parking tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a lot, you know. have all, And I know what it's like to have, you know, us being in the trucking business and the construction business. You better have good drivers to get them rigs race to race. And I was very fortunate to have good drivers my whole career. I never had a problem with the trucking portion of my deal, you know, I always ran two, three rigs and, um, you know, you got to get in them trucks and you got to run them down the road and you have to do it safe. We never had an accident. We never had an issue. Thank God. Yeah. And like you said, I mean, it's, it's a traveling circus and everything like that, but you know, we definitely want to thank you. I know from everyone in the comments have said, and everyone that hasn't said it, we thank you for saving a racetrack for giving us another facility to keep on the NHRA circuit and just a, another house, uh, the house of chaos to create chaos and create memories for the, from the kids up to the adults that are doing it and love the sport. So, I mean, from what you've done from your racing career, now your business side of it, we can't thank you enough. Yes, sir. Thank you for the support. And I can't do it without, you know, the fans and you guys and the, and the social media. I mean, we have people do my social media, but I, I will tell you, um, you know, Bobby Bennett, National Dragster Competition Plus, uh, Drag Illustrated West does a great job. You know, th- this is why this is why it was big this weekend, because the media and all you guys, everyone did their part, you know, and it was great. It's great for you guys. It was great for us. It's great for the fans. The fans loved it. I, I got to tell you. I have that one complaint, not even about the bathroom, because we redid the bathrooms. Totally redid all the bathrooms. Everyone had a good time. And that's what it's about. Kyle was right. It's kind of like, like customer service. It's all about customer service. It's it's hard to make everyone happy, but man, oh my, they worked hard to try. So it's great being with you guys. Hopefully next time I get on my damn computer. I apologize. <laughs> I'm trying to do this on the phone, but it was really cool watching Joe. He's, he's, he's going to be a star, that kid. I, I've seen, um, you know, I won a championship with Ali Toglet, you know, and, and I won a championship with Matt Smith. You know, Matt Smith's the best in the business, man. And this kid, Joe, he's riding good. He's got a legitimate shot. Uh, the motorcycle, pro stock motorcycle class is really cool. Um, I love watching it. Uh, I've been a big fan for years of it. And I've helped Ali out for a couple of races just – this year, I don't know. Next year, if he gets, if we put together the right deal, maybe we'll do another full time deal with LA. I would love to. Uh, just have to have the right bikes and the right motors, and have to be with the right team. Because if I can't run up front, I just don't want to do it anymore. I always have this picture my phone. Long, you know? There you go. How about that? Uh, yeah, I always have this picture my phone because John on the bike with Ellie. Ellie's got two kids now. He's ready. You know, Ellie's a fireman. You know, in Louisiana. I talk to his dad at least a couple times a month and GT. Uh, you know, they're still helping some people on some motorcycles. So we got a few things we're working on. We still own the Nitro Fish brand that got internalized into KPK Entertainment. So, you know, KPK Entertainment is the main deal now. Under that fold is, you know, Maple Grove and um, 
you know, Maple Grove Park, Maple Grove Camping, Nitro Fishware, uh, Nitro Graphics, all the other companies that they're all internalized now. And hopefully uh, this new theory that we're working on, you know, make us stronger to have the right personnel uh, to do stuff like your show and, and um, the new signs. And, you know, we can do a sign. Like if you told me you want to sign today, I have it done in 15 minutes. Hmm. which is really cool. Like, like we didn't get the pet boy stuff up until uh, Thursday or Friday, you know, until the decision was made for what they want. So um, yeah, it, it's, it's really cool. So hopefully you guys see some of the pictures and see what we did. And it'll be bigger and, and better next year. We just pray for good weather, man. You got to have the weather. Yeah, totally agree. Can't have rain. So guys, no, we won't hold you. To I know I rattle a little bit because I, I watch your show. I like it. And, uh, you know, it's exciting. And uh, thanks to everybody. No, thank you. Uh, we won't hold you too much longer. Like you said, you've had some long days here the last couple of days. So, again, thank you. Congratulations on running a great event. And we know we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you, Greg. Thanks, guys. And have a great night. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Same to you. Get your CompetitionPlus.com apparel today. Whether it's our nitro-burning funny car design or the vibrant door slammer design, we have the swag to show you are always in the know. Get yourself a hat, too. And we know not everyone enjoys wearing a mask, but if you must wear one, at least wear a good-looking one. Check out the new CompetitionPlusApparel.com for the latest from the place where you have trusted for your news on the Internet for over two decades. Darren, 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 what a show we had tonight. Had Joey on, and then we had Kenny Koretsky, the House of Chaos. Yes, Man, sir. It's another another great episode of uh, the Power Hour, just talking it up, yakking it up about everything drag racing and what just happened in Maple Grove. Yes, sir. What a show. I mean, oh. two great guests. And I, I wanted to ask Kenny, because I'm a big basketball fan. I wanted to ask Kenny. Oh. So he mentioned he mentioned Tommy Hammond. So you know Tommy Hammond's, you know, race pro stock back in the day, was in the NBA for a while. Uh, I mean, excuse me, that was Larry Nance. But um, I wanted to ask him, I believe, I believe Kenny bought Charles Barkley's one of Charles Barkley's homes one day, and Scotty Pippen actually bought one of Kenny's homes back in the day. I wanted to ask him about that, but didn't get the chance to. But yeah, you know, I'm a big hoops guy. I had oh. to ask him. Yeah, yeah. So so it's funny that you mentioned that. So my mom sent me a package because she's about to move out of California. And look what I got original nice. O'Neill nice. jersey from back in the day. Since I mean, since you want to talk basketball, and then, you know, I got some Jays. She sent me some of a pair of my Jays. You know, nice. I, I kind of feel special. I got a little package in the mail from mom. But anyway, that's <laughs> enough talking about basketball. Um, so, yeah, man, I mean, we're looking forward to it. Another week of drag racing coming up, rolling up, roll up on us real quick. Um, here in a couple of days, man, I mean, what are, what are you expecting to see? Are we going to see another winner in – uh, top fuel. Are we going to see someone go 300 mile an hour at the eighth? I mean, bikes. Are we going to see another winner? I mean, what what do we have to look forward to? Well, so in two of the four classes, the points leaders coming in lost the points lead. That's Brittany Force and Matt Smith. Two of the points leaders extended their points lead. That's Robert Height and Erica Enders. Let's see who can respond. Steve Torrance, I believe he's fourth or fifth in the points right now. His reign of five, uh, his bid for being a five time champion, it's not over just yet, but I mean, it's in jeopardy right now. Let's see if Brittany Forrest can respond and take back the points lead going into Charlotte. Like I said, I feel like this is her championship to lose. Robert Hyde, right now, I mean, he has set himself apart from the rest of the class. I mean, Task is still there, Hagen is still there, John and JR can still step up, Cruz can still step up. It's still a long way to go. I believe Pro Stock Motorcycle is not in competition this weekend. I believe they go to St. Louis, but in Pro Stock, Erica Enders extended that lead. But let's see if Greg Anderson can respond and make a show out of that. Can Kyle Koreski respond? It's going to be a good show. I believe once we get to Dallas, we'll know the true championship contenders going into those last races of the season. But right now, it's just all the sorting out process right now. But Charlotte is going to be fun, especially if the weather's good, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, I agree with you right there. I mean, just so much. I mean, Robert Hyde definitely does have a – I don't. I can't use that phrase either. I'm trying to be politically correct with some of the stuff. I was gonna say he has a chill coat on the lead on you know on the funny car class right now, but that's just not the right thing to say. Um, so 
just waiting it out, waiting to see what's going to happen. Top fuel. I'm, I'm just excited about that round by round. You never know what's going to happen. I've got the point sheet out and I'm going to start making my bracket right now. Uh, like Mike asked, you said, we need, we need uh, betting and brackets to be involved in drag racing. So, so much to go on. And then with, uh, with uh, pro stock, I mean, what Erica and the elite motorsports camp got going on there, you never know what's going to happen. So, like I said, a lot of great racing, a lot of stuff about to happen, but I mean, we could yak it up all night about our predictions, what we think. Uh, stay tuned to my Twitter feed, Slam and Sam, uh, Outlaw Performance e t on Twitter and everything else. You can check that out. Uh, Darren, where can the people find you and support you? Uh, you can find me at American Hot Rod Entertainment on Facebook, American Hot Rod ENT on Instagram. I don't have a personal Instagram, so it's just all American Hot Rod. Uh, but for Composition Plus, uh, stay tuned for a Sean Bowen or actually a Nitro Nationals recap uh, article featuring Sean Bowen. He actually won the race, so stay tuned to that. Come out sometime later this week, but that's uh, what you can look forward to coming from me on CompositionPlus.com. Well, everybody, we've made it past the eighth, unfortunately, again. We did hit 300 mile an hour. We were super close. We were trying to be the first. I, did, I don't know I, I if did it, the way I talk. I did with the way I talk. I hit well, yeah, the yeah. I mean, yeah. you'll you'll get there at some point. We'll just have to slow you down just a little <laughs> bit. Uh, you know, you think that you got grubby behind you pushing you along the way every time. But you know, it's it's always nice to have you on here, Darren. You're, you know, I mean, from when we started talking till now, I mean, you know, Lee would say the same thing. I mean, uh, support you, care. And whenever you need anything, it's always open arms. And you know that to Bobby Bennett and the whole crew at Competition Plus. We can't appreciate you guys enough. And to you guys that are in the comments and people that are still commenting, asking questions, and uh, everything else like that, honestly, I think this could happen. Will Camry get our first win? I think that would be huge this weekend. I mean, just to kind of shake things up a little bit in pro stock, but you never know. And one thing I can say when it comes to Cammy Caruso and the women in the sport, you know, everyone wants to make it a big deal about her racing Erica or two women in the final. Guys and girls out there, we, we got to stop that. Like, these are both athletes. These are both competitors. They they don't want to be identified as men or what. They just, they're athletes, okay? So let's stop making a big deal out of it, and let's just put it down to we want competitive racing on the racetrack. Um, but with that being said, again, Darren, it's always been an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show with me rocking it out yakking it up and talking man you got a dog you putting the dog in well she was she was jumping and, on my leg by, by the end of the show it was she wasn't here and you turn Darren, you, you're getting soft i mean brother but yeah, it's been another episode of competition plus power hour i'm slamming sam that is oh no that guy right there is who darren williams your name, man darren williams all Jr. right don't forget till next time y'all Signing out. Peace.